Brent Fikowski and his coach David drop by for a week to train with our on-site group. And on this episode of the Corpus Animus podcast, we dive into his 10-year CrossFit career, how he's helping HQ professionalize the sport, and a sobering discussion around pain tolerance if you want to compete at the highest levels. For those serious about the sport of fitness, now is the time to build strength, gymnastic skills, and improve your overall capacity. We have divisions for RX, intermediate, masters, and elite athletes. For more information, go to trainingthinktank.com. Uh, like almond creamer and Splenda. In it. Oh. But I like cheap coffee. Oh, yeah. You know, like some people like the I am sinking, aren't I? I don't know, man. These chairs, dude, wax sauce. <laughs> Brad Fikowski, welcome. Oh, is this a start? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to start uh, formally? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right, Bill, well, tell everyone why we're here, because I've already been getting a million questions, and I feel like that I could just say, <laughs> yeah. hey, here, Brent's going to answer it for you. I'll send a clip. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> my name is Brent Fikowski. My coach is David Spur. Um, his training company is Only Training, and I'm still with them, but I wanted to do a training camp um, leading up to semifinals. I might do another one before the games. Cool. It probably wouldn't be here, just yeah. to mix it up. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, but we've always got along really well, I feel, at the games, and I feel like... Uh, you know, I think we made the right choice already. Like, I think it's like a good training environment here and it's like-minded people. And this was sort of one of the places that I had, uh, you know, was on the top of the list to come to and train, train with. And, you know, people are like, oh, who's going to be here? I'm like, don't really care. Yeah. Like, I know Alexis <laughs> will be here and she's fit. And other than that, I was like, oh, it's just good people. And, you know, maybe share some ideas. Like, we're going to go for lunch and yeah. talk about training. And, um, yeah, just a place to train and to race. That was kind of when I was thinking like, okay, what do I want to get out of this week? Uh in the airplane coming here and that kind of the big word that came to mind was, was to race. Yeah. I feel like at Wadapalooza, I competed as an individual there and there was one or two workouts where I kind of felt like, uh, you weren't really racing. You were kind of staying in your own lane too mm. much and you maybe left a little in the tank. Some, some events I did race and other events it was appropriate to stay in my own lane. And there yeah. were one or two times where I felt like I was a little, a little timid and unsure of my abilities and allowed other people to maybe, stay ahead of me or past me i'm like oh you know that's that yeah, yeah. i don't see you like can, i'm gonna red line if i'm, I'm gonna go. yeah yeah be careful yeah and i was like oh you know i need to make sure that that i i'm able to get that out of my system um so that leading into semis when the situation calls for it i can you can go i can go do you have you always trained solo yeah yeah essentially yeah but you've always been really good at racing you think it's back your backgrounds in swimming and volleyball. Oh, yeah. and volleyball. Yeah. And obviously you're not racing in volleyball. I, I, I think I'm a good competitor. And yeah. I think the coaches I had in those sports um, were, were not only good, like, you know, technically and stuff, but they just instilled really good habits, like competitive habits. And so when you think about, you know, 10,000 hours and that sort of thing, I think by the time I went to my first CrossFit competition, I was very good at the act of competing, like yeah. going to a weekend sporting event and competing multiple times is what you do in swimming and what you do in a volleyball tournament. Mm. Um, and so my ability to, you know, bounce back after a bad game or a bad race or a good race um, and just compete and do my best is something that I feel has always been a strength of mine in every sport I've been in. Yeah. Um, not that I've always been like the best in the world or whatever it those other two was um, one of the tactics they gave you. Was it like uh, to assert your dominance when you come into a new spot into a new <laughs> spot? Cause I know like when Mal O'Brien came here, she came in here to train and then she proceeded to like do sessions in between every session we had written just yeah. to like flex on everybody. Yeah. Or that's just what she does. You know, she's very fit. <laughs> but you on the other hand had an interesting tactic. You just come in here and just fucking BO <laughs> the shit out of everything. Just <laughs> smell my man. Was that, was that, was that planned? <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, did you smell my BO on day one? I have no idea what's going on. I, right now. I had, a, I, I did stink a bit on day one, and it wasn't. I thought it was intentional. Like, let me let me assert my dominance. <laughs> I feel, I feel, like I take pr I take pride in uh, like. Um, <laughs> Hold on, let me let the audience know. The all the other days he smells great. First I, day, I know I I felt terrible. I I take pride in my uh, my cleanliness. I'm a pretty particular guy, and you know I try to shave or whatever. Um, and that, sh you know, when you have a shirt, you've just been wearing too many times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Brandon Dorman does that all the time. <laughs> and, and it was, you know, I, so I put on that shirt and I'm like, I think I stink day to my coach. <laughs> and I'm like, I know I, like I showered, like, you know, sometimes I travel too. Right. But I'm like, nah. And then I'm like, Sh it's this shirt. Um, and yeah, I threw out the shirt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I throw them out too, right? I away. thought it was a dope move. No, I, I felt, <laughs> and there were so many people there on that first day. I was like, and no one's going to like 
say I'm anything. Glad, I'm glad you said Brent, something. Brent's here and I, he's doing <laughs> Well, I would, have never like, said, I would have never said anything, but I heard you say something. Yeah, yeah. I so know. So I was like, okay, it's fair game now. I know. I, uh, I was like, I was self-conscious about it. It's like when you have a, a like a zit or something. But, um <laughs> Yeah. Well, now the world f- and he flexed on the workout too yeah. on yeah. that first workout. Wor- yeah, I did workout. do pretty good yeah. on that first workout. Yeah. <laughs> but you did bring gifts, which was nice. You brought some some stickers for my computer yeah, that doesn't stickers. exist. Yeah. What's that? What's that about? You just decided to go cold turkey? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just used the same shot from many moons ago. So if you see me <laughs> talking right now, my hands are actually up and I'm waving. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They can't Usually see it. there's uh, a lot of a lot of stickers on the old uh, yeah. computer. Well, yeah. what's messed up though because it's a it's a sticker of Pat Vellner. Yeah, uh, which is also kind of funny to me because you guys came onto the scene at the same time, and I'm I'm still the guy who, when I have to make a left or right, I like put the L's up, and I'm like, well, left is the one that makes a proper L, not a backwards L. Mm-hmm. Now I know my left and right, but there's like this weird like hiccup in my brain where I'm like, am I sure? Am I sure? I don't <laughs> know what happened when I when I learned those things. I must have had like a brain fart, and it's just lasted for years. With gun to my head, I know what's left and right. Same with you guys. Y'all came on, and I think someone said that you were Pat, and so the first, <laughs> so for the first couple just of years, two, the two Canadians, I, you know, gun to my head, I I know you're Brent, but but like in my head, there's just a brain fog, and tape. then you give me a freaking sticker of Pat, oh, and I, it's like so it the funny thing is, I makes brought that up until you mentioned it. I actually did think that was me. What? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Is this like you're putting him in here so you could have him as a training partner? No, I just had those (laughs) stickers. I went through. I have a little box of stickers. I was like, oh, those are cool. Yeah, no, wasn't too much thought put into it. All right, so back to CrossFit. Back to CrossFit. What? When did you get into it? Like, what were you? What was your entry to competitiveness? Yeah, I mean, there's you'd call it two different entry points. So when I was probably 19, playing college volleyball, my volleyball coach at the time ian bennett um we were doing some cross training you know like weight room training and so we were doing some like kind of crossfit workouts he gave us like we did a 2k row and i went under seven minutes oh yeah that was a big deal big yeah deal. how what was your size back then uh so i was same height six two i would have weighed like 193 pounds okay what? so a lot lighter pounds. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what do you weigh now i weigh 219 no. okay yeah big difference yeah, yeah. um most of that was put on in like the first year across it when i was like 21 right away not right away but over the course of a year i would have went from you know 20 uh let me think 203 to like 209 and then the next year probably 209 to 213 and then kind of since then so that would have been 2014 and then so the 2017 games i weighed 215 okay and then now i weigh you know 219 so basically from 2017 games till now it's been pretty much the same pretty much the same yeah. go you know go up a pound a year i think the heaviest i've ever competed probably like 222 mm. 223 and what's the heaviest you've ever gotten ever gotten like off season it would it would only be like 227 or something oh, okay. yeah it's, it's not like i've ever been like 240 or something and you never put on body white body fat in the weight gain uh, yeah, I mean, I like a little bit, very you tiny know, and, um, the amounts that like I might notice, yeah, but, but not not, not normal. People. No, it would have just been like when I was, let's say, competing at two twenty two, which might have been the twenty, let's say, it was the nineteen games around there. Um, you know, if I probably as soon as that was done, wasn't training, maybe had like a bunch of pizza for two days in a yeah. row, and then just you know, water I, retention. Yeah, and, and then it's you know in the morning or something. Oh, look at that! I'm two twenty six. You know. Okay, so twenty nineteen CrossFit for strength and conditioning in volleyball and that that was your entry point to crossfit you yeah. just were like oh i like doing this yeah I, I always liked weight training and stuff and then i was gonna join crossfit lethbridge um i was basically then i was going to college worked for a year to save some money to go to university in australia where were you working uh enterprise rent a car uh-huh. oh nice uh, yeah, any yeah. good stories oh man <laughs> <laughs> how long do we have <laughs> just, yeah. just a just a quickie yeah. you got oh, one man. like iraq is uh the green machine it was a it was a really tough job. I'm trying to think of Iraq. I was like, "What is he talking about, Iraq?" And then uh, I was like, "Oh, the, Enterprise, the ac- yeah, acronym. Yeah, it's the, it's the acronym. Got it. Um, Just drop an acronym, yeah. models. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Um, uh, now you're putting me on the spot. Oh, it's uh, okay. I don't know. Maybe uh, we'll think of something. I'll add it in later. But yeah. so I worked there, and I wanted to go to a CrossFit gym in the morning just to get better at volleyball because I wanted to play some volleyball when I went to Australia. Uh, but they didn't have a shower. Mm. And so I had to go to just like a global gym 
trained kind of what I thought was CrossFit. Like I was doing power cleans. I remember like clean and jerking my body weight, thought it was a big deal. I'd do like kipping pull ups and burpees and stuff. And um, again, just to get with no thoughts of competing, it was just like kind of learning what it was through maybe through videos or just through like what this coach had told me. Um, again, to, you know, to get better, to get better for volleyball. And then uh, moved to Australia didn't do any CrossFit was just then just started to play beach volleyball. Like first day I was there, we biked to the beach and found, you know, courses. like competitive yeah. or competitive. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like double a, so people that play triple a or, you know, maybe pushing their way to be competitive on like a national or international level. And then double a was below that. So still okay. competitive. Um, but I mostly played indoor growing up. So it was kind of like a transition to try to learn that side of the game a little better. And then a beach volleyball player that, you know, we were, playing with every now and again said you should go check out this gym crossfit broad beach drew griffith like really good guy you'd love it there and kind of sent them an email i think i still have the email it's pretty cute <laughs> and uh yeah and then just like showed up the next day and you know started paying the whatever it was they had a for. shower i'm guessing they did nice <laughs> yeah is that like a no deal for you like well, you go to a gym and there's no shower yeah. you're like fuck it i can't be i can't well, the bo it. thing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but uh well no it was just the way because i had to go to iraq and i had to wear you know uh, and so oh, i was like oh, okay I, and i had you had to get there so early i had to get there at 7 30 a.m or 8 a.m and i yeah. was like i don't have time to drive 20 minutes to this gym, drive 20 minutes home, shower, drive 20 minutes back. Yeah. The gym, so me and you yeah. talked yesterday and like that gym, not having the shower kept them out of the game for what, what was it? Like full a year. year. A yeah, yeah. And they had really good coaches there too. Heather Gillespie. Mm. And so it would have been like very helpful, very helpful. Yeah. It's very, it's very interesting <laughs> yeah. to look back and think, man, if they had a yeah. shower, what if you just went to work dirty? Like you, that was just unacceptable to you. You can't do that at Iraq, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would, Iraq, it, no, it, no, that, no, no, that no, no, it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. um, you can't allow this. No. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I don't even respond. Yeah. You're like, come on, dude, sacrifice. Yeah. I'm like what? I mean, at the time, it I wasn't thinking about CrossFit as something that. Yeah. You like, know, it I was, was like, oh, I just training. went to this like university gym and had great equipment and stuff, and I just, you know, was just training. Did it end up ever helping your volleyball? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, no, I was, I definitely, like, I jumped higher, um, you know, the highest I've ever jumped was after doing three years of CrossFit. What was it? Vert? Straight vert? Yeah, I mean, the way we tested it was, uh, you would take a volleyball approach. Oh, so okay. So you take, like, a three-step approach, two-foot landing and jump, and so when I played in college, I think we did a vert test, like, once or twice, I think the highest I got was, like, 10 foot six, and then... Oh, you do it to a touch? Yeah, to Not a touch. Not like a num... Uh, yeah, so I can stand and, and reach, like, if I'm reaching about eight feet. Okay. And so I guess that would be two and a half feet. And then I got up to 11 feet. Can you dunk a basketball? Uh, Yeah, I've dunked a basketball. Nice. I don't know if I could, like, right now. Yeah, yeah. No, um, it's okay. We don't need you to do it right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I've, like, kind of alley-ooped it, so to speak. I, I can't palm it. The palm, well. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to be able to dunk more part of the, the volleyball approach doesn't like lend that well to it I they're all like change. single footed uh, not all but a lot of dunkers are single footed jumpers and i feel like the approach for hitters oftentimes they're like stepping up and jumping from two feet yeah and volleyball you're you know you drift into it too especially indoor where you're you know you jump and you land and you're covering you know like four feet at least yeah whereas basketball you want to be more up straight up to, yeah to dunk so anyway um yeah so uh yeah joined the crossfit gym and you know because of you know there was a lot of money for me um immediately was there six days a week and classes yeah classes yeah okay. in the morning and then i'd go to go to um go to school where were you on the totem pole in classes in your right away room? i was pretty competitive yeah 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 do you like have like some people who were like whooping your ass that you still remember like uh, i mean it was it was back and forth right like yeah. depending on the workout but immediately i came in i tell people oh wow you did so well right away i'm like i think within two months i did karen unbroken yeah you know and yeah. i had a really good uh like hell in time like right away um Do you keep well, up with any it? of those people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. drew uh, the coach and like sal and yeah there's a few people there i still talk to like fairly regularly what was your hell in time back then what's like the world records what like 705 no or it's like in the or, mid sixes i think oh okay low sixes you think so yeah okay anyway um yeah, it would have been like mid sevens then maybe yeah. or something. Damn. But yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I was running the 400s fast and then just going unbroken. My kettlebell yeah. swings would have been slow as hell and my kipping pull-ups would have been old school. The old ones, yeah. But I would have been running the 400s in like, you know, 120 or something. or Just continuous. Yeah. 
And you were always aerobic and the strength was stronger yeah. to develop? Yeah. What so, was your strength levels just on day one? Yeah, I mean, day, so I split jerked 315 before I could back squat it. Really? Yeah. Sh swimmer shoulders. And yeah, and volleyball, volleyball too. Maybe that, is like, like the like jerk motion overhead. is is a. I mean, it, it's basically like a blocking jump. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I had really. I always had good like overhead stability, and that that motion just came really naturally for me. Like the power clean, the push jerk, and the power snatch came pretty naturally for me. Um, squatting not so much. But and you your squat, if you did Karen unbroken, I feel like your squat endurance had to have been pretty damn good. Yeah. And you're a tall dude with good squat positions yeah it's like kind of rare yeah like my squat positions are fine and but if you go back and like my wall ball speed was really slow oh, like it was okay. unbroken karen it was probably like 515 oh okay right which is you just couldn't move fast through no, the pattern just, explosive and, and you know the, the wall ball like a volleyball is just like a natural it just felt natural for yeah. me to do that um but yeah like slow like yeah. you know people can do karen unbroken and mid fours low fours yeah low four so yeah. it's like a full minute slower yeah. and but i just didn't stop kind yeah. of thing um yeah let me think so and then yeah so within you know a couple months like it was drew was like a he used to be a rowing a rowing coach like a competitive rowing coach for uh surf life saving stuff and so he, it was a competitive minded gym i think so they were people were going to comps and just the way that they coached was like, you know, to, to lift more, to move faster. It was kind of just, and yeah. that obviously made sense to me. I was a competitive athlete and, you know, they said, oh, you should come and, you know, I think we did some, just like a barbecue partner comp and that was kind of fun. And they're like, Hey, we're going to Brisbane, which is like an hour drive, um, for this like full one day competition. You should come. And I was like, oh no, like, I'm, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I, I like, too much. yeah, it's too much. <laughs> and I was kind of like a little, little intimidated or afraid or something. And thought everyone oh everyone's gonna go and broken they're gonna crush me and yeah this is 2012 yes yeah, so this would have been uh this competition i'm describing would have been like july 2012 so like winter there and um yeah so went there and i think i finished I finished fifth in the competition oh nice was, yeah it was you like, just didn't feel like winning or? <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't do a muscle up i've posted it on my instagram a few times i've um, seen that video me like falling through the ring yeah. so i got my first ring muscle up like a week before then these were at the end of the workout and I was like falling through the rings, couldn't get it. If I, if I could bust out doubles, I probably would have come third mm. at the competition. And so it's like, Oh damn, like let's do this. And there was a guy there that made regional. <laughs> do you remember who it was? <laughs> no, I'm sure I could, I'm sure I could yeah, figure yeah. it out. Um, I like, I still remember the workouts and stuff and, um, I have a memory for that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah. And so after that, it was like, all right, let's, let's do this. Like, like I want to compete more. This was fun. I'm, I'm, you know, inclined to this and I'm not only that, I can see the areas I'm weak in and it was pretty obvious. Super obvious. Yeah. 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 Even still like your training priorities, are they still like, I know exactly what I need to prioritize or is it more complicated it's now? It's a little more complicated now. I think like the, there have been, um, over the past few years, the, the needle or like the dial has shifted mm. where my neglect of endurance because I'm like, Oh, I'm good at that caught up to me ah <laughs> um and that has caught up to me in, in some competitions and so now i mean the amount of endurance i did let's say from 20 uh let me think 14 to 2017 is very little <laughs> fair but I, I was able to main yeah you know, but you were still winning still the winning events, events yeah. right i was still winning chippers i was going yeah. to the games and coming top three in like enduring events with running so i was like you know, I don't need to do any of this stuff. Yeah. Um, and then it, you know, it started to catch up to me in 2018 and again in 29, you know, like in, in certain areas. Right. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'd sneak away with it where it was just enough that it looked like it was there, but it really, in hindsight, I realized now it wasn't. Got it. Um, sorry, I'm just talking and I'm forgetting to inhale. <laughs> <laughs> you got this dude. Yeah, he's, this guy could train all day, but he can't talk for five minutes. Speaking of that endurance. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> power lift walking yeah, up a flight of stairs I'll go get your bottle of water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like pretending to drink and I'm just actually breathing. Some man, some, get, get this man some sniffing salts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wake this guy up. Uh, so then, you know what we did is my coach said, you know, I think you can make regionals, right? So, cause you have to do the open in seven months away and then regionals will be in 10 months from today kind of thing. So I think you can make it now. Oh, I don't know. Mm. And so he's like, no, I think so. So we're going to run through the open workouts from, that happened six months ago. So every Friday for five weeks, we did all the open work. So you did seven minutes of burpees? 
Yep. A whole hey, baby. Yep. It's my favorite workout. Um, you know, we did the 10 minute snatch AMRAP. We did all those workouts yeah. to the standard, everything. And then we're like, where would have you landed in Australia? And uh, at the time, I think you needed to come like 60th, you know. They yeah. Just, yeah. And I think I would have been, you know, 65th. So you and were close. So I would. I was. Oh wow, we would have been close. And, and did you repeat them or? When I don't you think did that. You just no. Did we like did that as just like yeah, one yeah. once every Friday just to you know put our flag in the sand so we knew internally as a team like you know I didn't post on Instagram like yeah. I would have won yeah. this yeah. workout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would have been sixty fifth. Yeah. <laughs> put that in your IG bio. <laughs> would have been sixty fifth. Yeah. Um, I always hate that when people do uh, you know games workout. And yeah. they like post their time and there's not like a, a heavy amount of cash. Yeah. Ast- yeah. Ast- yeah. Ast- <laughs> yeah. Like, like you, that was a 10th know. workout. Yeah. Of- <laughs> like I, I've, I've done that. I've tested, you know, I've tested some workouts I've seen at other competitions every now and again. But if I ever do post about it, it's like, yeah. you know, this is testing. Yeah. <laughs> or I won't even post my time. Like this workout was painful. Yeah, I did the, nine, I did the Wadapalooza nine lives. Do you remember that? No. Anyway, it was just some barbell. And I was like, I think I said, I'm like, I'm not. Maybe I posted. I don't think I posted my time, but if I did, I was like, "It's not. <laughs> it's, not, it's the not the same." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's a lot easier seeing the yes. mistakes other people made, and then like choosing a nice, smooth, yeah. the perfect strategy, yeah, not yeah. knowing. Well, but so it, you said your goal was regionals here. Your coach talked you into it yesterday when we talked. It sounded to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you did a lot of competing, like local comps. Yeah, and so, had you done that at this point? So no, at that when we did those. We, we, we went through the open workouts. We're like, okay, we can do this. You know, seven months away, um, we're going to, you know, push for the open. It was very obvious what I needed to get better at. Like, my muscle-ups were still terrible and just my strength. Those were kind of two big things. And even just, I mean, I think my I, have a, I had a list of goals. We wrote it kind of like on a chalkboard somewhere, and it just said sets of muscle-ups, sets of toes-to-bar, sets of chest-to-bar. It didn't mm. really even have a number. And it had deadlift the rainbow, which was 365. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> and uh, what's red, blue, yellow, yeah, green? Yeah, red, blue, yellow, okay. green. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, it's probably 361 or something. And then, um, and so then at that point, then from that time, that was, you know, the, the off season, right? So that's when all the competitions are. And yeah, there were just, there were a lot of competitions around that time. So 2012 from I don't know, August to January, I probably competed. Let's say that's seven months. I probably did eight competitions nine mm. competitions mm. lots so of I, team i brought up recently on a podcast it seems like a lot of people who are at your level have a history of just doing lots of competitions when you look back do you do you recommend that to people who are starting to be competitive like do lots of competitions or depends yeah i think it's it, yeah it depends on the person and what your goals are and what your strengths and your weaknesses are like i probably didn't need to do that many but it was fun you know, and that's sometimes part of it. It's like, you know, I, I, someone had the option where near where I live of doing quarters or there was a competition that same weekend. And I was like, go to the competition. Yeah. <laughs> quarters isn't fun, fun yeah. and <laughs> you're not going to qualify. Like, you know, young guy, he's like 18 and, you know, he could make it to yeah. semis in, you know, a year or two or three or something. But I'm like, just do these. I'm, and I said to him, I'm like, do these quarterfinal workouts in like a month or two. Do them to the standard. Yeah. Take the stuff on the floor. Film them. You know, because you need to practice that. That's like a that is part That's of its it. own skill. It's its own yeah. skill, and you can't <laughs> overlook that. As you know, the logist like planning the logistics of quarterfinals is a is something you need to like find a way to enjoy and relish and understand and and do and not just be like this is stupid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it. Like yeah, you, ha- you know yeah. you can't it can't be avoided, right? Yeah. Um but I'm like go to the competition cuz it's fun. Yeah. You know. Well, I guess the the thing there would be like learning to compete yeah. in a actual competition rather than having to make your brain yeah. think on a random Tuesday. Did, yeah, but did you learn it? Did you think you already had it? From the other sports, yeah, I already like the first competition you went into, you already were like, yeah. okay, I'm good at competing. Yeah, okay, I think so. It yeah. wasn't. I, I don't think it was at all necessary for me, but mm. it was fun. Yeah, yeah. So you think if you were coaching young people, that it's just about getting into com- competitions that simulate like multiple hard things in the same day, like uh, wrestling or volleyball or like just because swimming those like the the rhythm of those competitions is like hard energy system event rest hard energy system event rest like or strength i don't know what you would call like a a volleyball game but you're jumping and running and doing things and then resting and doing it again so are you asking in the context of like a youth athlete yeah like does it need to be specific i find it real weird like these young athletes coming up now are competing only in crossfit so they're getting really good at like racing crossfit 
is it necessary for the competition to be in the realm or can you just compete and just say like, Hey, do a bunch of sports, get used to competing, get used to the ups and downs, the emotions. Yeah. Sounds like you got it from other sports. I think as much as possible, if, you know, if there's a young athlete listening or a parent, you need to stay a multi-sport athlete as long as possible mm. for a multitude of reasons. And I think, you know, if, if, if an athlete came to me and they were I don't know, 15 or something and they had an equal love for three sports and one of them was CrossFit, I'd probably say try the other two to focus on those two. Because yeah. I like CrossFit, but the reality is if you're a youth athlete in North America and you're 15 to 18, or let's say 13 to 18, and you're like, man, I love CrossFit, I want to compete, like, it's not a lot of opportunity. Yeah, three times a year. You know, if you're lucky, you qualify for Wadapalooza <laughs> and the games. Yeah. If you're lucky. That, yeah. And, that, and then that, that means you have to be in the, like, top, cream of the crop cream right of the off crop. the bat. Whereas yeah. if you're good at, you know, football or soccer or swimming – like you can be like not that good and still have a lot of opportunities to compete. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, like, you know, why are you playing sports? It's like, it's not to make money. Yeah. Like that's not, that's like the, the, the tenth thing that can maybe come from sports. It's like learning how to lose, learning how to win, being a team Character player, learning how to be, yeah. you know, be coached, learning to love staying in shape. And you know, it's, it's the, it's the life skills that you learn from it and you know, the, the relationships you build and all that. And then, and then after all those things would be like, if you're lucky, you know, help it pay for your education, scholarship, and CrossFit can't do that. And then the last one would be, like, make a career out of it, whether that's as an athlete or as a coach or, you know. Some Announcer or something. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like in, you know, I, like I have friends that I played with there's that are coaches at colleges and universities for volleyball. So that is their career. Yeah. They're coaches now, um, which is great. You and know. you always had that mindset? Like it wasn't about winning or becoming a pro athlete or making I the never, Olympics? I never thought I'd be a pro in an, in athletics. No, really? I was always pretty focused on grades and, um, yeah, if anything, I, I mean, <laughs> you know, if you were to ask me and cause this is the thing when I was in high school, when I was, let's say in grade 10, 11, 12, I was a good swimmer, but I swam in the summer four months of the year. And like, that wasn't putting you on a track to make the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. You needed to swim all year round. Um, and then in the winter I was playing, you know, I was doing a bunch of sports. I was doing track or badminton, basketball, volleyball, but it kind of turned into just volleyball and swimming by the time I was in grade 10. And, you know, it was pretty clear I wasn't going to be an Olympic volleyball player. Mm. Like that was, I didn't care though. Yeah. It was, you know, I made it to college. I got a scholarship. I mostly sat on the bench. It's like, there was no point between grade 10 and when I quit playing volleyball at 21. It's like, you know, if I really apply myself, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Yeah. No, it wasn't really happening. Right. Yeah. Um, and there, and there was no, like, there was never any frustration around that. Like, I didn't even make, uh, you know, Team Alberta was kind of the cool thing to do, and that was basically the 12 best volleyball players. And, and I was probably the, I don't know, the 30th, okay. I guess. Yeah, yeah. 35th, maybe. I don't know if I was to put a number on it. Um, but, yeah, and so there was no, like, oh, I really got to find a sport that suits me that I can become a professional in was never. Yeah, you just in, were competing for the love yeah, of it, just, kind of. just competing for the yeah. love of it. And it was the same with CrossFit when I started and. And when you went something in that period going into regionals, uh, what did you make it in 2013? Yeah. So I made it to regionals 2013. I came hundredth in the world in the open. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I did really well. Yeah. Um, and then I came, you know, that was uh, eighth in Australia. And then when I went to regionals in Australia, I finished sixth. Oh, so you were so pretty close. Was it yeah, three like, spots back three then? Three spots. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the three were pretty yeah, they were pretty clear cut. Who right? was it back then? Uh, Rob Forte, Rob Forte, Chad McKay, Brandon Swan. Yeah, they were. And they good. made it the year before as yeah, well. Yeah, and they were just like clearly had the full package, and everyone else was missing a piece or two. Yeah, um, and uh, so that you know, after that, I was started to believe. I was like, oh, I can, you know, if I continue to apply myself, I can you know probably make the games. Mm. Um, but still, not that I didn't believe it, but wasn't like, you know, I, let me put it to you this way: as soon as that was done. Uh, a weekend or I immediately started playing volleyball again because we had this team and then we went to so I didn't do CrossFit for two weeks because I started playing volleyball again and we went to this like competition for that and hurt my knees because <laughs> of it <laughs> 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 had, a, had a really sore knee for about seven months after that a lot of jumping yeah and it was just this you know all of that training up to regionals and then doing that I had some patella pain but um, yeah but never you know and then only when I yeah then eventually did make the games, but it was never like, Oh, I need to make the games so I can become a professional and do this full time. Hmm. It's like, I just want to make the games. Yeah. Cause it's like, did you make it the next, the following year? No. So I was really close two years in a row. Okay. Just kind of my like you know, 14 and, you, and 15. Yeah. I oh, was like wow. one, I was 
basically you know two points away both those years oh. how did you take that were you like pissed um the first year i was it was because i moved back to canada you know found a job settled in what was the job sorry i gotta ask yeah no i was uh you went back to epac <laughs> <laughs> Iraq. 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 Um, no so at that point i'd finished my accounting degree and so i found a job as a um a, you know a bookkeeper accountant at a uh, strata company so like for condos and stuff and then had that for a year and then got a job as the accountant and then turned into financial controller for a tech company and that job was great love that job um and you kept you were still competing yeah, yeah. still competing and so this was just you know this is the, the side hustle that not not even a hustle because it wasn't hobby. making any money it was a hobby yeah, yeah i just loved to do it yeah and so you know it was just um what i did you know when i wasn't working was was this mornings yeah. evenings weekends so after that first year barely missing sorry i got you yeah no, no that's all right the first year barely missing that was 2014 canada west regionals um i was actually really happy with the weekend because i'd kind of had that a knee injury and you know i moved and i was like i just want to go to can west and kind of like you know show people i'm here to party and then like kind of make moves next year and uh and then it went really well i think i was in tied for first or something first or second after day one and second after day two and then kind of slipped away on me on the last workout. But what was it? Overhead what? squats. Ah. It was the 64 Oh, pulls. I think I've seen that video. Yeah, and eight the, overhead squats. Yeah, and I failed the eighth one like uh, three times. <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing heart, blow up. Yeah, heartbreaking. Um, and it was. And like it's it's annoying. But at the same time, I don't know. It wasn't for lack of effort yeah. or anything. It's not yeah. like, you know, it was just, just happened because I was weak. Yeah. And then... Uh, of the so bottom. matter of fact, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just weak. I was just yeah, weak. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, but like, yeah, I was did that like make you like energized to get back? Yeah, it was, after it was it? energized. It was like, oh man, like I didn't. I get. Let me put it to you this way: I didn't feel like in that in those twelve months that I would made much progress because you know I'd been traveling. Um, there were you know stretches where I training was not the focus because I was traveling around trying to find a job, driving around. It was all like moving countries, all this stuff. And the knee thing, so I had, had not put very much work into my leg strength. Um, and I was like, hey, I'm just going to, you know, I made it. That's great. This is super exciting. And then to, to, to have seen progress both, like, worldwide leaderboard, you know, all that sort of stuff. Like, if my scores had been in Australia, I would have been closer to guys, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I was like, oh, wow, I actually got better. And now everything's set up for me to succeed this year. Mm. You know, I've got, like, good training gym. You know, um, I had a new coach at that point. The things were going really well with uh, – Big Bad Bobby D from Australia. And I was that was a like, big dude. Damn, dude, you need yeah. a better name. <laughs> big Bad Bobby. I remember Big Bad Bobby yeah, D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. And we still keep in touch too. And um, so it just felt like, oh, wow, you know, made more progress than I had thought. And uh, what yeah. was your IG following at that point? Ballpark it. So I started. I started. <laughs> got a freaking accounting ledger I with it. I started Instagram right after regionals ended that year. And it was, I like, I was like, I don't want to get it, <laughs> you know, like, it's like, this is stupid. I, I'm not about that life. And, and then I kind of, I sort of got it because my grandma wanted to follow my training and stuff. And so I was like, oh, you know, kind of like just something for like <laughs> so friends and family and so even innocent. people in Australia for them to follow yeah, yeah. Um, before I started hawking products. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was just like, you know, a way for people to follow my training. And um, so yeah, zero, I guess one. Uh, it's been a big climb <laughs> yeah big climb and then uh but basically from then until two years later it was probably only at three thousand and then when i you know i'm jumping ahead but i did end up making the cross <laughs> yeah surprise, surprise in 2016 <laughs> and i won and when they posted the podium pick um you know i jumped from three thousand to like eight thousand in 24 hours really yeah Wow, and then by the games, I was at like twenty five or thirty because they posted about me a decent amount in the summer, huh. and I intentionally was. That was when they would repost a lot of like photos and videos that athletes would share. Yeah, and um, you know, we kind of started to figure it out at that point. Like we, Claire and me, and even a friend of mine who takes a lot of photos for me in Kelowna, and so we would like intentionally like, oh, they'll reshare this. Yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah. did like a really Played good the photo game. or video, and yeah. then they, and sure enough, I, you know, we said that six times and four of them they reshared and that you know that would give you a little bump 500 followers or something and then one time at the games that year i won what was it the climbing snail workout and claire my wife was in the stands and she said she like looked at my instagram before the workout and after the workout and within that like two hours 
it went up, you know, 5,000. It's crazy how fast that can happen. Oh, dude, huh? it's going to, yeah. it's about to go up another fucking 20, right? Probably. After this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going to get three yeah, training think tank followers. Yeah, Take a screenshot I, now, I boy. I don't grow like that anymore. <laughs> um, not a lot of people can, but yeah. So hold on. You, you didn't podium in your first games. I came fourth. Oh, yeah, that Pat, was the Pat and me. Yeah. 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 Pat and I. Oh. So you missed out. Then the second miss out was the that one out, worse? That one was awful. That hurt Thought emotionally. The oh, reason. really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was really tough. I, I and like I kind of said, I'd I'm like, man, everything's set up. Yeah. This year's going to be great. And then as the year progressed, started putting like way too much pressure on myself, and mm. was really stressed leading up to the competition. Like, this is the year you got to do it, and you know all that kind of. Grandma's stuff. watching on IG. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. set my Instagram up for yeah. old grandma. <laughs> Grandma's like, I got five grand riding on you. Don't let me down. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, was the point gap close when you barely missed it? In, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Um, what was the know, story? You, you I want to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So twenty. I think I meant to say, oh snap, and I just said, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, Two thousand. My word. Uh, twenty fifteen. Yeah. So leading up to it, I just really stressed myself out, and uh, first event, Randy, and like I finished and I celebrated like I won the world. <laughs> Because you, know. you just like you went out too hot. No, no, I, I did really well. I oh. think I came third in that workout, and I was—I mean, that was a nerve-wracking way to start yeah. a, a competition. Yes, um, but it, you know, and that wasn't a workout. I was super confident in my fin. You know, anything could happen in a yeah. workout like that. So it went well, and I celebrated like I won the World Cup. It's just like, <laughs> just there was just way too much emotion, and that like doesn't typically work for me. And so by the end of the weekend, um. Not only was I just not good enough, but I also, I think I just burned myself yeah. out a bit. I don't think it works for CrossFitters. Like, I've seen high-level athletes in other sports that have that type of, like... That yeah, doesn't work. Yeah, but you just, I don't think you can be that intense for 15 times in five. Like, I think it's a more calm person, excels at the highest level. Yeah. You can, I mean, you can bring that out for a one-art max yeah. or, you yeah. know... Or, like, a 90-minute, 90 90-second 90 workout. Yeah. But then, like... You're, you're not getting that type of aggression or energy or um personality types succeeding in marathons yeah you yeah know? not that we're a marathon sport but it lends it's kind of yeah like a five day yeah grind. even like a you know even like a, a phelps right who's doing eight swimming events in uh, at the olympics it's like you can't you can't keep that up yeah um so yeah so you know had a really good start where randy went really well tommy v went really well um won the chipper set a at the time i think a world record and then um or clo no not quite uh but it was a really good time it yeah beat everyone by a lot in that one um the snatch handstand walk couplet went really well for me yeah that was like a max snatch and a two 300 foot hand yeah, walk handstand something. walk first and then two attempts at a yeah. max snatch yeah just, that was that's another that's nerve-wracking way to test man <laughs> yeah Golly. and again like when i when i hit that second snatch like <laughs> I like celebrated so hard and then I had to sit down. Just so I was just <laughs> like so so much so many nerves, right? Which that was a little more justified. Yeah. But um so then by the last day it was the it was a muscle up no, squat clean ladder. Yeah, so the end? strict handstand push up workout went quite poorly for oh. me. Which again, I just wasn't good enough yeah. at those. Um and then the last event was the fifteen ring muscle ups and the squat cleans. And I just was too tentative on that one. I kind of just I just didn't push the pace and again uh, part of that is it just wasn't very strong in the squat clean so yeah. there wasn't that so you didn't feel confident there wasn't to that go confidence rush. to yeah. rush through it um we're I talking mean, about your first games right no, no this, this is, is this the, is the regional the oh. second oh the closest regional. That regional. Yeah, yeah so i mean you know and then by the when it was all said and done lucas parker won shout out lucas parker <laughs> shout out lucas parker he did so good that weekend and those are uh, some those are pretty good tests it seems for lucas yeah it was Randy a, is fast it was a short. power up yeah. weekend you know um, i remember hearing another games athlete complaining about that or telling it to dave or heard he told dave or something that it's like hey man only there's one chipper long and it it was a chipper but there was still a lot of like power components in there to kind of uh and then every other workout was super fast the yeah. average duration was like two minutes yeah. um three minutes because you had the handstand anyway yeah yeah um but yeah lucas was amazing that speaking weekend. of lucas can you do his full warm-up routine when he goes up to a barbell <laughs> can you do the whole i yeah we i mean we used to do a bit more trash talk back in the day and i i, I remember Leading up to regionals, I, I think I posted a video like, uh, of me like, I'm like, oh, practicing for Randy, like coming for you, Lucas, and it was me doing the warm up on like a 75 pound snatch, taking like, 15 <laughs> seconds, and then sure enough, I think he won or came, you know, he won the weekend and he crushed that workout too. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> he had the last laugh. He, oh yeah, he definitely did. <laughs> no, he did really great that weekend, and then from second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, 
there was uh, Kevin Simons, Tyson Takasaki, Joe Scally, Cole Sager. They all qualified. And then Cody Anderson was next. And then myself. And we were all within like 10 points. Man, it was those, just those cut lines back in the day were always so yeah. close. So Cody was, you know, a point away. I was, uh, you know, it was very close. Yeah. I don't know the exact. but I, So officially I came seventh. But, you know, there was a time where I was, you know, second and first. By, yeah. You know, by a margin too. And then it just kind of. And like on f- five seconds on the squat clean ladder oh, can yeah. like be 40 points yeah, on those or, you leaderboards. Know, one more handstand push up. All those yeah, things, yeah, yeah. right? It was, it was. Uh, yeah, it was super. And close. this is and where you wanted to quit. Yeah, after that, I can kind of considered it. I was like, oh, maybe I'll do rowing, or I'll just. I was just like super frustrated. Just felt like it wasn't worth it. Well, at this point too, um, there wasn't that many taller people. I mean, there's still not, but I mean, how many tall people were? I think I don't know. Maybe the Asia bar to. I feel like there were Asia, almost more taller people back in. Well, no, maybe no, not. not. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, I guess mean, not. Asia, Asia, Bar- Asia Barto. Um, uh, I'm blanking. Sorry, Spencer Hendel, Chad McKay. Those are three of the taller guys for sure. I'm, yeah. I'm taller than Chad and Spencer. Asia, his last CrossFit Games was 2014. Yeah, and, and it was a little different. I feel like the the sport has evolved so much in the last. Yeah, he was 10 tall, years. tall. He's yeah. six four. Yeah, right. Um, I'm just tall. <laughs> and then I just started training again and started to just enjoy the training and then really just kind of got my head right and. You know, had some good conversations with some old volleyball coaches that kind of put my head in the right space, and yeah, then was able to come in with a lot better uh, mindset next year. Did you crush the regional that year? Yeah, you won that one. Yeah, yeah. Was it by West almost, Coast? Yeah, by like eighty points. Was it yeah. in California? That one was in. It was either in like it was Del Mar, in Portland, or oh. no, no, no. It was it was still the, the West, but not the California. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, that one I did really well. It's probably the still the best competition i've ever had really yeah I'd was known, it good tests also or you just executed like a, i mean that's anyone's guess but um i just i had no no reps i executed everything either exactly as i wanted to or faster than i wanted to or you know if some of them were tested i yeah you know either match those times or beat those times flow state every workout just everything felt like effortless like, wow can you yeah. pinpoint anything in particular that heading into the weekend that set you up for success yeah i just like surrendered the outcome just a lot of chop would carry water stuff where it's just like completely at peace with, and I think it's just, it's harder to, I still do that now at times, but it's, it's just harder to do that now with like pressure, pressure, I suppose. Yeah. And like, there was just less eyes on me at the time too. So it just, it was just my coach and me. And, um, and that was just, but I, I still have done that. It was just like, it's just a magic. And as soon as the weekend was over, I was like, this is going to be the best comp I'll ever have. Really? Yeah. I you knew. just knew it. I knew. Right there. And it was, it was kind of nice because, you know, you have – because, I mean, we had that – I think when I was in high school, um, we had a really good season where we went undefeated and we won, like, provincial championships, Division One, and all this stuff, and 59-0. and 0. Oh, baby. Um, <laughs> I like that. And uh, Who's counting? And we didn't, like, you know – we knew obviously it was super special, but it only it was only a few years later where you know I think the athletes realized how special it was, and the coaches knew. Yeah, they were like, "Oh, this is going to be the." the They'll sport. never do that the, again. You know, like, yeah. I'm never going to have another team like this again. Yeah, you know, and so I think that was you know when I was 16, and so this is you know I would have been 24, yeah. and so when that happened, I'm like, "Oh, this was really special," mm. you know, and I could kind of appreciate. You it. like soaked it in. Yeah, it was the same in Dubai 2019. I was able to kind of like. The few days after, I was able to really appreciate like this was a very special competition. Yeah. Was that the year um, we went, or that I, I went? In, uh, I went in nineteen. Oh, yeah. Who were you there with? Travis. Oh yeah, he had a, yeah he had a rough competition that. Time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because he did really well in eighteen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, so sixteen, I just I just knew it was just super special. Yeah. It just you know. And then you went to the games. Did you know you were that good? Or yeah, because yeah. they, they had the combined leaderboards so that, you know, you could see everyone that made the games if they did regionals yeah. once. I think I would have been, you know, sixth or seventh maybe okay. or eighth. I have it written down somewhere, but something like that. And then I'm like, well, on paper, the workouts at the games are better for me. Like I am a good swimmer. I yeah. am a good runner. And these things weren't tested at regionals. And and I'm like good at the odd object stuff. And we didn't really do anything. So I just kind of figured, and with some of the guys, you know, in that top 10, I'm like, ah, I think they're more like – chest of our bar muscle up power snatch kind of guys yeah so i just figured that i'd be in the mix for like a top spot i didn't really have any delusions of like winning but i went in thinking like oh i could come anywhere from like first to 15th and I, i'm not going to be surprised and i'm not going to be disappointed you're very level-headed try to be yeah. yeah did you give yourself the name professor 
No, it was given to me in Australia. Oh, thank by, God. By okay. <laughs> yeah. no, you're, you're, you're not allowed to give yourself a nickname. <laughs> yeah. You can call me. You can call me Big yeah, Shooter. Yeah. <laughs> call me Big Pro. Yeah. Um, when you lost your games, you, you can call me Hot Sauce. Hot yeah. Sauce. Why yeah. Hot Sauce? I don't know. I'm just like thinking about <laughs> landish nicknames. I want people. All right, to Hot know. Sauce. When you lost your games, virginity, and you went into that first, you know, you're hanging out. Was it similar to regionals, or was it like, oh man, I'm in a whole new world? Did you have any nerves for it? I guess is what I'm asking. <laughs> Didn't really have any nerves at that point. I felt like I was ready. Yeah. 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 Didn't really have nerves. I mean, that being said, the the run, the first event was a 7K run, and I got, like, heat stroke from that pretty bad. Really? And so it was pretty scary for a bit. Yeah. Hold I, on. Set was Oh, that was the one that no, was Sam at Briggs the ranch, passed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so I went into that, and uh, I was, like, confident I was going to do I finished third in the workout, which was great, and – was in the last, you know, kilometer was just a straightaway up and back on this gravel road. And I was starting to kind of lose, lose touch with reality a bit. And just, I don't know, I was just high knees or you know whatever. And that's why that video was Sam passing me my running. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, he's like uh, high, yeah. high knees. And I'm like, <laughs> so I finish, I get some water and I kind of sit down or whatever. And then I go to my bag, which is kind of inside this little room. And I'm like getting water and we had to deadlift kind of right away, more or less. I'm kind of getting stuff and I'm like getting ice and I'm putting it in like a shirt to like cool down. And then I'm just putting it down again. And what am I doing? <laughs> and you just like, I'm just like, forgot I'm, not, where you I'm not okay. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm, I'm grabbing these things knowing I need to use them. I need to eat. I need, you know, I've got some like refueling food that I have kind of planned yeah. and I'm like, I'm sort of just like putting it here. And then <laughs> just like, moving it neurotically. <laughs> wait. Like, what? I'm not okay. Like my brain isn't functioning. And then like I look down, I'm peeing my pants. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm like not okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is, this isn't just like, oh, you know, because you know, you finish, you finish your run and you're going to need a minute or two to catch your breath yeah. or whatever. Just like, you know, the, we did the bike sprints on Friday. It took me, you know, a good 10, 15 minutes to get, you know, yeah, get back, back to, to North, like back a baseline. To, okay, and then it just like wasn't happening and kind of getting worse. And so, yeah, I talked to a, or there was some guy walks by in a CrossFit shirt, some color or whatever. I'm like, I need medical. Like I need, oh yeah. I'm like, yeah, I need medical. So then, <laughs> Dude, I just pissed my pants. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he like goes and he comes back. He's like, yeah, yeah. Tent's over there. <laughs> yeah. I can't walk. <laughs> so I like already have my shoes off. So I'm walking on gravel to see them and, Roy McKernan's like, hey, is it okay if I film this? I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, so then they cooled me down. and <laughs> You know, that, yeah. it was, he was very polite yeah, about yeah. it, right? Um, <laughs> okay, if I film you having heat stroke. Yeah, behind the scenes. And I was like, I was crying. Look, man, like, this would I make think, for great content. Yeah. <laughs> Your like, grandma was going to want to see I'm this. I'm thinking I might have to pull out. Like, I'm having these thoughts of like, man, my first games, I'm going to be that guy that pulls out first yeah. workout. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I didn't. And uh, well, still wasn't feeling great, but ended up. I think PR in my deadlift at the time, which was four six seventy five, I think. But I, my warm up was like two twenty five, three fifteen, and, like, <laughs> and out, go, go, yeah. <laughs> Man, I've seen games athletes do shit that just doesn't make sense. Like people be in the weirdest physical states and hit PRs, or yeah. you know, the day before look like they're dying and come out and still finish the next three days. And you're like, wow, I don't have that in my human spirit. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that was. And w well, for me with that, I was just like, you just need to go out and hit the first bar. Cause yeah. I, you know, I knew with the deadlift, I'm like, I'm coming bottom 10 here. This yeah. is like, that's a foregone conclusion. So just go out there and just, you hit the first bar and you know, which I think was 400 or something. Yeah. Like it was that. like 405, I think. Yeah. And then up by 10 tens. Pounds, something like that. And it might've been 425, but mm. either way. But 475, that wasn't bottom 10 back then, was it? I think it, it was. Yeah. Was it? Really? Yeah. It was either 480. Yeah. It was. Damn. And they were already that strong. Yeah. 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 Yeah, now I can deadlift 610. So. <laughs> yeah, 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 no big deal. Problem solved. Well, so nope. you said you weren't, you weren't nervous at the games, but was there any guys that when you were in the back that were kind of like, uh, maybe not intimidating, but kind of like, was there any like alphaing going no, on? No, no. Even I if it was on a like perception, you know, in your, all in your head? No, I was just excited. Like, you know, I got to shoot the shit a bit with uh, Josh Bridges and Ben Smith. And that was just cool for me. And yeah. Like, you know, give them some shit and just like, just joking around about yeah. stuff. And that was fun. Got along well with them. Um, I do, you know, if speaking, you know, you're kind of asking like, this, this ties into that. Well, I am, you know, very, uh, like type a and whatever I am, how I am. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> those watching yeah, can, yeah, make, yeah. can make their conclusions on how yeah. I am, uh, old soul, I guess you might say. But, um, 
so I remember thinking when I was going to college, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be around like like minded people that are like driven and, and then no not yeah the it's case. not like that <laughs> and then i was like oh when i go to this university it was like this pretty good university in australia and like no it's even worse um and then i kind of thought that might be when i went to the games and it wasn't you know? <laughs> <laughs> um with and you know there not, that, there's nothing wrong with that yeah. right um you know i remember someone games athlete that like i looked up to that had been there multiple times that was like a top 10 and it, this was Saturday midday, and we're all kind of sitting in this air conditioned room hanging out. And he's like, "Oh man, I'm I'm kind of hungry. I gotta like text my wife and get her to bring me something from the uh, the food, you know, like the food trucks out there." You just couldn't believe that somebody didn't have their food prepared. Yeah, because <laughs> I was like, "Man, this is your, you know," and, and you've been close to like achieving like some like you know, yeah. oh, you were ninth once, you could have been seventh or whatever, right, or podium or something. I doesn't matter. Um, I'm like, I got all my food packed. This is my first time here. <laughs> you know, Did you say yeah. it? No, <laughs> no, no. You kept it to yourself. But <laughs> and, and, and again, it's not that it's not that packing your food is is no, we the get difference. You. Yeah, yeah. But it's like if you're not doing, you know, when I met Lazar uh, in 2021, did I see him at the Dubai the year before that? Maybe I did. But anyway, 20 uh, the year before that was COVID. I think they canceled it. Right. They? No, no. He 2019. Anyway, let me put it to you this way. In 2021, we were on a bus at the CrossFit Games, and Lazar had uh, Tupperware with potatoes in it. And I either said to him or I've said to someone else, I probably said in another podcast, um, oh, he's he's going to do really well, and he will do continue to do well. And he has. Because he had potatoes? Yeah. That's like, can but, we have a just chop that up as one video and say, this is the key. But it's, Have it's, potatoes it's like, I in know I'm, if I see that and I know if he's done that, he's done a hundred other little things. Yeah. It's the attention to detail. It's the attention that you're to detail. Attention to. And obviously that works for me. Yeah. So it's Were they sweet I potatoes? Respect. No, they're white oh, potatoes. That's why he hasn't put no one, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Um But you know, if he's paying attention to that, he's probably paying attention to a bunch of other little things yeah. and all those other little things matter. Mm. Like it's not one of those things. There's a, there's this, study it's something like if you have google chrome on your laptop you have a higher iq or something like that and it's not i've been trying to tell these people <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it it's it's because it's not because it's google chrome it's because you took the time to like download it and change from the stock mm. and there you like that that I, character I, I trait had, indicates that you're yeah, likely you're doing, to yeah and yeah. um maybe resourcefulness it, it, yeah. It, yeah it might not even be iq i'm uh I sh you know, I don't like that's okay. Something. But Google it. Give it a good on Chat GPT. Yeah, don't tell use us. Safari, so, asshole. And, and, but basically, the thing was, yeah, it's don't like, be an idiot. But it's like now that you've read this, um, don't just go downloading Google Chrome. Yeah. Like, you're going to get smarter, <laughs> yeah, yeah. or you're going to be more successful, or whatever, yeah. because yeah. that's not it's the like point. It's like a correlation. Yeah, it's a correlation yeah. thing. Everybody, if, tag a selfie of you eating potatoes out of Tupperware <laughs> and tag Brit yeah. and and download a Google Chrome. And tag, <laughs> and tag I, Pat Belner yeah. too. Just am because. I am I a hashtag road to regional? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hashtag white potatoes. Anyway, yeah. So that was your first games. You crushed it. You did you go fourth, fourth the first two? Fourth, second, fourth, second, fourth, yeah. and then third too. Was there a third? No, there? there. Well, there was a four, two, four, and then a nineteen and twenty didn't go as well, and then twenty one was third. Okay, yeah. so you were on the podium twice, That's and correct. just off the podium twice. Yeah, the two times I came fourth, I was you know within a, a like three points each time. I, one time I was tied with Lucas Hogberg. So one point away, I guess yeah. you'd say. And then with Pat, I think I was, you know, five points. Or yeah. How did those piss you off? Or, like, how did you take those? Um, the first one, not at all. Because fourth one. is good and it's your first one. Yeah, yeah, and it was, you know, I felt like I executed really well that weekend. Um, you had, like, four wins that year? Yeah, four. Yeah. yeah. And I just executed really well. I was just really proud of, you know, how well I did and just felt like I left it all out there. And there was very few things I'd go back and change, like, very few um obviously the year in second same kind of thing um the next year was a little harder just i felt like i'd made some mistakes in the probably more in the prep um and but also on the competition that i just felt like ah like third was a much more realistic possibility um and it's it's tough like i don't like saying that because it's easy for me to be like oh if i change this workout it's like well yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then lucas oh, I mean, yeah did lucas have a perfect weekend yeah, no yeah. he would have changed this and he yeah. would have changed that attempt on that snatch and he would tend 10 more you know so yeah. there's always that and it's and it's same with pat and me in year one like you could just keep playing that game until 
Yeah. 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 You just got to accept like that's how it went. Everyone didn't have a perfect weekend. No, or no, if they did, it's like one person. You, yeah. You never, I mean, like I said, once I have 2016. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you basically don't otherwise. And so, but th- in 2018, like relative to my own experiences and expectations of like competition execution, I was just behind. And then there were just other things that, you know, like in the lead up and stuff. I'm like, oh, I probably didn't do enough of that or did too much of this or whatever. Yeah. So I want to ask some big picture questions because mm-hmm. now I feel like that gets us all the way to present. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's you, Vellner, Froning, Frazier, BKG, Noah, maybe Panchik could be in that discussion. Like a group of a very small number of people that were in podium contention or around the podium or got into podium contention for multiple different years in a row. Mm-hmm. You're all pretty different. Like when I, I don't know anybody at a super deep level other than the people that I coach, but like just as an example, Noah and you couldn't be farther Very from, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. in terms of the way that you are and operate. Yeah, like well, not, yeah, obviously strength and weaknesses is just like physical athletes. Yeah. Or like, you know, if we're talking of, of us like vehicles, let's yeah, say. Yeah. Like, um, but then also how we are like emotionally. And yeah, yeah. Just like disp- yeah, disposition. Different. Yeah. What is it, do you think, in that group of, elite competitors and you could say females as well but just because you probably know the guys better what are the variables between you guys that make you good at that level aside from the obvious that you're all good at the skills like you all can do the shit yeah yeah um you know it's interesting i thought about that when like i said i went to the games and i was like oh my people <laughs> yeah yeah so, <laughs> i mean the, the one place that i felt most like that uh, was the job i had at straw house like, really yeah, yeah i just you know lots of smart um driven driven people driven people i suppose probably the best word um detail oriented um which is why i stayed there so long when i probably could have went full-time athlete sooner or whatever um i think the one thing at the games was uh an ability to tolerate pain discomfort yeah i think that's uh, and, and maybe you know that was like the 40 men at the crossfit games i think that was the one thing i came to where you know of those 40 like 37 of them like they can tolerate a lot can you dive into that a little bit like tolerate pain so yeah and i'm talking about like you know doing a thruster and burpee workout and go into a 10 out of 10 yeah in like this really hurts and so i've seen some people at like a crossfit gym that are kind of like me where they're very analytical and they deeply care about movement and they can't get, they're like, oh man, that was a 10 out of 10. I'm like, that was a six. Yeah. I can just tell from your body language that you went to, a, like if I had a gun to your head. Like you, your subjective pain your experience. Your subjective pain experience is not, and everyone's is different, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, your subjective pain experience is not a 10 and you think it is. Yeah. Do um, you think that there's more people that are not elite that actually can tap into that? Because that I, I've coached a lot of people at the high level and then maybe all the way through the spectrum. And I feel like some of the people that have less talent actually have more, sometimes more grit because that's the only thing they can leverage to keep getting better. Whereas people that have talent, like I don't know for sure. I can't go into Noah's body if he blocks it out. But sometimes it seems like when he's in his highest element, he's moving at full speed and like dropping the hammer and not in that much pain or discomfort. Yeah, and so, and this isn't a s- slight towards Noah, but I would I would agree that Noah, you know, on a scale of Noah to who's a who's a games athlete that can clearly tolerate a lot of pain that will just like go into the shit. Like Dane Smith, I know he hasn't made the games, um, but I've spoken with Ben about Dane Smith, and he can like basically put himself into the hospital and yeah. the thruster workout yeah. in like a scary way where he can't talk for 30 minutes after work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would say on a scale of like Noah, I, Noah when, wouldn't I, when, dig I, into yeah, that. when I you watch would Noah, it just doesn't. And I would say I'm in between those two people. Yeah. Like, and, and that's not to be like, I'm tougher than Noah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's yeah. just, I just, you, know, you leverage different things to yeah. get the top performance, but it's yeah. And so, Yeah, so that's interesting. I'm saying, obviously, that the games athletes, they have that. But there's plenty of people you watch at a CrossFit gym that can go just as hard or harder than me, you know, in that subjective pain tolerance. But they just don't have the skills or the mindset or the the mobility. Is that something you practice? You you think that person that you're talking about at the gym who's not going there just needs to practice going there? Or 
They just don't have it. They don't have it. Ooh, what is it? That's a good training question Gosh, too. Because I, I'm, I'm not. There's probably an order of operations <laughs> on it too. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. not one to complain or talk about like genetics or like this guy doesn't have it. The pain tolerance thing. I don't know if yeah. can, have you have you been able to teach people that. I don't uh, know if you, I don't, because this is the thing, I haven't coached a lot of people, yeah. but I feel like of all the, like, you know, the characteristics of, like, what you need to be an elite CrossFit athlete, I think you could coach pretty much all of them. Pain tolerance. Yeah. Well, I think of pain tolerance. You kind of have to hate a, yourself a little bit. <laughs> well, where do you think yours saying. comes from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just said it. He just said it. <laughs> I, I think just, like, a, a very deep desire to succeed. Yeah. And you know, whatever that means or to be maybe to be loved like attention and yeah. Yeah. Maybe not attention is the right word, but yeah. Like it, not like, look at me, look how hard I can go. But you know, like in, I think about swimming and like the desire to break a record I wanted to break was very strong. Yeah. Like, and it was more important than the, yeah. Oh, so, so much, so much more important than, you know, the the desire for oxygen yeah so what what i would say <laughs> yeah fuck? that's interesting yeah, yeah. You know, like, and, but like yeah. matt fitzgerald has a book called how bad do you want it and he talks about all this research he did on endurance athletes and it kind of says that the people that just want to go as hard as they possibly can to get the outcome are almost always the most likely to get it and yeah. I know it's not that simple, yeah. but it's kind of like, well, you did five years of work to get yourself into a position that you can podium at the games. That's probably feel like sifting out 99% of your competition. Who's just going to like not really dedicate themselves or not do the small details or not make yeah. their meals or not work on their technique. Yeah. And there's obviously like, there's the, you know, I, I am very patient, you know, so I can, I don't mind putting in a lot of time to something to eventually get a payoff that, you know, but, but yeah, then there's the short term, like the pain thing where I guess, I mean, here's the question. I, I didn't get to watch anyone else on the C2 bike on Friday. My guess is from like, I mean, you probably watched a lot of people on the C2 bike. Did I go as harder, harder than anyone else? I think so. Like you just, you, uh, put was the, that the last piece? Of yeah. The three? So the actual workout was, this will come out on YouTube at a different time. Yeah. So it's three I rounds. Say, for tank, <laughs> yeah, balls yeah. And <laughs> three rounds for time, touch and go power snatch, three rope climbs. It was like a, for Brent, it was a little over two minute of a workout. So he had about a minute 50 rest. Then he did muscle ups and heavy squat cleans for three rounds, which was a little under four minutes, two minute rest, and then 750 meter bike, which is what he's talking about. And, in that he just like pinned it like three, two, one, go out of the saddle full speed. I think the damper got down or the pace got down to like a one Oh seven ish, which was far faster. And most people approach that and they're not truly like if you're in a car, three, two, one, go like the equivalent of what you did is put the pedal to the metal and shift to your top yeah. gear. Most people didn't do that. So I think some and of that, that is part of part of that's me knowing that that is going to get me the best score. Like if yeah. you told someone to do that, they'd be like, all right, sure. And they yeah. do it. Yeah. They, maybe they're just like, Oh, is that a good idea? And you're like, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Coach. Yes. Yeah. In a sub 90 second workout, it's kind of okay to blow up yeah. and like hang on. It's like on a 500 meter row. Yeah. It's like, you can't really, you can't you know, settle it. in and then it's like, no, <laughs> yeah. you, you sprint and then hold on as opposed yeah. to settle in and sprint to finish. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if you can. Yeah. You just have to, I mean, it's just a realization that in, in this sport, you know, if you want to have success, there are certain scenarios where you need to push it until it really, really hurts yeah. and just hold it there and keep dealing with a couple it. more seconds. Yeah. 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 And so to when, answer that, your, oh. when that happens to you, what are you thinking? So when you hit that point where you're like, Oh, screw this. Like, wh what are you doing? Uh, I usually, um, yeah, I think dif different people will do different things for me. I think about like numbers usually mm. like how many you have reps you have yeah. left or so like on the bike, I was thinking about, um, you know, I'd count to 10, like on my, my feet, one, two, ah. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then I kind of glance up and I would look at the, this is what I used to do in swimming. And so I would I'd glance at the clock and, you know, it'd say how many more meters. And I'd say, okay, that's probably only 20 more. Yeah. So count to 15 and then you're, then it's five more until you're done. Were you watching your, this was interesting. I don't know if you would have noticed this. Were you watching your pace when you looked up? Um, I don't, sometimes 
I don't quite remember. Okay. So your coach was yelling, keep it under 130. Right. <clears throat> and you had your eyes closed for a lot of it in that last part of the suffering. You close your eyes and be in the saddle and be pushing, and you were at like a 133, 134, and then you would open your eyes and look up. But right before you opened your eyes and looked up, you sped up and got the damper. You got the oh, speed really? to like 130. And I was like, huh, I wonder if that's conscious or if he's just like, if he's even looking at no, it. Or I, In that one, it was just, yeah, I was just pedaling. And maybe I, I think at that point I was trying to like, you know, change a cue where I'm thinking, okay, you know, you're pushing hard into the feet, like try and think of the bottom of the stroke. Yeah, yeah. Or, just getting power any way you can. You know, oh, you know, you're, you're try to use your glutes somehow by shifting your butt in the seat. Or, you know, it was just stuff like that. I wasn't really, I, in that event, I was not using the monitor as any source of like really important information. I mean, I could have maybe looked at the RPMs um, and that I was kind of bringing my damper down a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, you messed with it a lot. You had like four four damper changes in it, I think. Oh, I three think or I four. Have three. I yeah, three maybe. maybe. Yeah, three maybe, which I don't know. Um, I haven't had like a lot of experience sprinting on that. So yeah. it seemed like a good idea. To <laughs> yeah. It works. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think it makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's so in, so in swimming again, that's, I guess that was something I was, I learned just myself in swimming was when it, you know, starts to get painful, you know, you're thinking about, okay, how many more strokes until I take a breath or how many more strokes to the wall or, or, you know, you would, especially in swimming, it just feels like your arms and your legs are filling up with cement. And so you're trying to, maintain technical accuracy and so you're, you're focusing on that like don't allow your whatever you know like entry into the water to you know, start get sloppy to yeah. so get sloppy so you need to you know still glide in even though you're still going fast and you're still you know all that sort of thing so yeah you, you know i'm basically either like honing in on some technical cue that i think is going to be important or you know some sort of number thing i just disassociate is basically yeah the, yeah, the, yeah. The one yeah. you try not to like you kind of get away from the pain focus on anything else yeah and it's that. just this like well there it is yeah you're, you, instead of like feeling like you're in the fire you're sort of like an observer of yourself in the fire like huh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you know and so when yeah on the bike i did a, i did a really good job of disassociating where and it was also the knowledge going into it like this is going to be you know 10 out of 10 hurt yeah in the legs and you're just it's like a non, it's not even a negotiable. Like yeah. that's just going to happen. I think David and I were talking about that and I'm like, it's different with the squat clean where you're like, Oh, you know, I got to wait until yeah, I'm you got to make it. I yeah. got to make it. So I can't just, you know, be stupid and just try and touch and go or something. Yeah. But on the bike, it's just this like head first into like, well, this is going to be extremely uncomfortable and you just have to completely separate yourself as though like that discomfort is even any importance. Yeah. To the you asked a question before we talked deeply about that and said can you change it in coaching i think the only th there's a disposition some people are going to be tougher at dealing with it but i think you can only try to coach the psychology and help people have a why mm. like you yeah. if you help them understand and then give them graded exposures to pain like you know you put them on a 2k row progression sometimes i'd run a progression that's very like anti energy system training where it's like right. we're going to do a 2k row every week like you're just literally going to yeah. face it every week and give people graded opportunities to get better it moves the needle a little bit but i think the best just they either have it or they developed it or they want it or i'm not sure yeah i think there's you know i i guess i used to, let me put it to you this way i used to think that knowing how to pace workouts was something you kind of either have or you didn't and i don't agree with that anymore i yeah. think it can be i think it can be taught yeah and so i think there probably would be ways to to teach pain tolerance i think it would yeah i think uh, probably a lot a lot of it would come down to more like psychology and yeah. talking to them yeah. like okay why are you doing this and yeah. you know what are your goals and yeah. and then like making them understand this is a huge part of that is going to be you know pain tolerance in these things and then yeah exposure to those things um and maybe talking to more athletes that they look up to and watching them and then watching videos of themselves and, you know, hearing their experience of how much it hurt and then starting to realize like, oh, uh, there is a gap. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's still, it's still measurable. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's subjective. Yeah. <laughs> but, and so probably the people that subjectively can't go as hard as, you know, let's say you think they should in order to be, you know, successful in the sport, those people m might be very like objective people maybe yeah i suppose there'd be a mix some of them would probably be very sensitive maybe like emotionally yeah. sensitive people and then but some of them might be very robotic more like me um <laughs> 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 and 
they might be too like, oh, like this is starting yeah. to hurt. You know, I need to. You know, <laughs> this is starting to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> they need this too much. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. What is what is my purpose? <laughs> you, you pass butter. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> you suffer. No, not that much. Um, so maybe like trying to quantify it. Fair. Might, yeah. Might help. Yeah. Like if if you can get above a nine out of ten pain sensation and hold it for longer than thirty seconds, it's a victory in this session. And like give them yeah. almost like coaching intentions. Yeah, and I think I think just again trying to give them a bunch of data and like whether it's speaking with them getting them to talk to other elite athletes, showing the videos of them. Hey, here's a video of you on your assault bike sprints. Here's a video of this guy on his assault bike sprints. <laughs> here's and him throwing up. After. Yeah. And here's like, <laughs> and you look at the look on yeah. their face and your look, and then you talk to them. How did that feel? And they describe like the physical sensations they experienced. Like, Oh, I experienced none of those. I yeah. experienced a, a, a subtle burn. Yeah, in, yeah. My right <laughs> squad. <laughs> in the VMO. I could feel my heart. Yeah. 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 It's like, I, I started to feel a slight arch in my low back and I thought, mm, I should slow down. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Other guys like, I tried to break the yeah, bike yeah, yeah. and instead my heart exploded. Yeah. So yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Another big picture question I had. You said you listened to some podcasts. I don't know how many, but I wanted to know if there's anything that we've said internally or our coach has said internally that you disagree with. Like there are things that you listened and you're like, oh, I don't agree with that. Or mm. um, and if there's not anything. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to. Th- yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, got a oh, fucking man, notebook. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, a scroll of things. You know, I've listened to some of your podcasts on, you know, like improving the sport. Yeah. And anything I disagree with on that would be super minor. Yeah. And it would be more like, oh, I know a conversation could be had and I could totally change your mind because I'm right. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's what I want. talking about our opinions? Yeah. 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 So yeah. he said he listened to podcasts. <laughs> my question was, Chris walked out of the room to pee. I had my, to pee. My, I could not yeah, hold yeah. it anymore. Oh, my yeah. question to him was there, has there anything been anything on our podcast that he's listening to, whether it's me or Brandon or whatever mm-hmm. that he's disagreed with? Yeah. Cause part of my questions I, I want to go into is the sport itself. And I know, Maybe this past year and a half, I've just been more vocal about it. Like, I really do want to mm. help make a change for the whole sport, for the athletes, for the integrity of the athletes, yeah. for the growth of the sport. And I do think that there's been a lot of mistakes made, and there's been a lot of people, either high level athletes or high level coaches running camps or judges, that verbalize things to me. And I'm like, all right, well, if I have this platform and I have some respect in the community, I feel like now I almost have an obligation to put it out. And right. It's weird because I don't always think I'm right, and I also and know you I'm didn't not. do that for so long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm kind of curious. Like I put all these thoughts out there. You know, a lot of people in the inner circle. You've been podium athlete. You're one of the movers and shakers in terms of the popular athletes. That's in part of the popular brands. So it'd be interesting to have somebody be like, "Okay, well, change my mind." Like I put my thoughts out there, but yeah, I'd have to. I mean, anything that you guys have said that I haven't agreed with is like just super, just little or small. Yeah, stuff. Well, let's, just, let's just talk about it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, so I, I'll quickly I'll say two things real quick. So one, you know, I think there was something regarding like unknown and unknowable, and yeah. I think our opinions on that are slightly different. Yeah. But really minute, and and they'd be closer than you know, like we, if there was a side of like a spectrum, if there was a spectrum, yeah, we'd be very close. Yeah. Um, something that I was thinking about that you said to me when I was here a day or two ago, we were talking about mm. improving technically as an athlete. And you said something to the effect of, well, you know, like some athletes aren't going to respond well to that. They're more like, you know, intuitive. They just want to hit it hard. Yeah. And, um, and I was thinking about that and my question to you, mm. and may, maybe, oh, he turned this maybe, around. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> and maybe I'm, maybe I'm misinterpreting your feelings on that, but yeah. it was just a very short conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have an athlete and I'm saying, oh, I think, you know, like technique is just so important. You have to improve yeah. the stuff. And you were kind of saying like the Olympic lifting yeah. can be overwhelming yeah, yeah, for yeah. a CrossFitter. Like, That's exactly like, what the conversation yeah. was a technical weightlifting coach can sometimes be disruptive to a high level CrossFit athlete. That's what I said. And do you want to quickly explain why you say that? Uh, yeah, well I've experienced it. So I've, I've sent Travis to multiple technique coaches. I've sent Noah to hold on. And just to make it, Super clear. You're talking about sending them to a Olympic weightlifting coach who that's what they do yes. is Olympic weightlifting. Yes. And only. I said there are things that a high level weightlifting coach can see that I can't see 
or that I can't necessarily change. I don't know what the, what the cue yeah. is, what the, what do I need to do in the progression? Do I need to put more poles in? Do they need a, like yeah. time under tension? So I've used them as consultants and I have found with a number of athletes, not just Travis, not just Noah, not just one person that they worked with that there are certain types of people that they're highly technical and they're very mechanic mechani mechanistic about how the body moves and how the body moves the barbell. And they think that way. And because they think that way, they're very technical and their movements are very clean and their, their repetitions look very similar. Mm. I just coached a number of people over the years and not all people can get their minds and bodies to operate like that. Like some people just have, you know, their, their cues are more like emotionally driven about their braces. And so if you can get one of those people overly thinking about technique, it almost drops their one RMs because they're relearning the motor pattern. Like they're going back into cognitive thinking and the technique changes never, they never get there. Like they do all the uh, drills, they don't get any change. So their net gain in the skill doesn't go up. And I find that there are some people that are just very technical and they break things down technically and they get results from technical coaching. But in CrossFit, it doesn't seem like technique is the driving force of progress for everyone. There are definitely technicians in the sport, but like... Well, and in that example, though, there's a difference between Olympic weightlifting technique and then how yeah. people are mostly snatching. Yeah, and, and in CrossFit, it could be disruptive to like rep cadence as well. Like if somebody's right. overly technical on like 10 for time, it can almost slow them mm. down. But I was also just talking about technique in general. Like sometimes people are respond to verbal cues and mechanical cues and some people don't and i don't know why that is i don't know what it is that makes them do it like right. and i've tried even with pacing like mm. i could watch you do a chipper and be like all right that makes sense and then have a conversation with somebody and be like all right here's how i want you to break the workout up they get into the workout and they just don't execute like that and then they come off the floor and they're like i tried to stick to my plan and then like my biceps blew up and this and that and then like with travis i'm like all right just fucking go like just go by feel and he just responds better to that and i've tried a million times i mean we've done video review splits i've stood on the sign with a mm. stopwatch but like at the games you can't do that yeah, yeah if i could be on the floor i could be like all right break now break now and like <laughs> actually coach him but ultimately he's got to do it autonomous or like autonomously i don't know got to yeah. do it himself interesting yeah i your vantage point is so like singular. Oh, and right? I know, and I and I try to be aware of that. But I guess let me put it to you: what I my and now this now I better understand your point, so my point is less relevant. Um, he was getting my argument so he could dismantle it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like come to me in the <laughs> shower tomorrow morning. Yeah. You need the, some time to shower, think about and I'm gonna it. crush this guy. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> It'll be too late. Podcast <laughs> over. Know, right? Um. Would you, if, uh, my, my thought yesterday was like, if, if the, would you say those same things if you were coaching, if you were a swimming coach, a weightlifting co coach, a golfing coach? No, I mean those, I think the people that will excel at those sports are probably often going to be more technical thinkers, but there's always exceptions like Bubba Watson as a golfer was a complete feel based player and has very unconventional technique but has been a multiple time world like masters champion and this and that never got a lesson never videoed himself his swing looks very un i think if you tried to make that very creative mind more technical my guess is he stopped scoring well yeah david duvall was a world champion yeah. and he tried to rebuild his swing because tiger woods came on the scene and never was in the top of the world ever again so coaching yeah, okay. is a very weird discipline because yeah, you understand like all right, well, if you want to lift as much weight as possible, it's got to be very technical. But yeah. then if you get somebody that doesn't respond to technical coaching and you try to make them more technical, sometimes it doesn't work because they're just thinking. Like they stop yeah, being yeah, yeah. in their... And sometimes it does work. Oh, yeah. a lot of times. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not okay. saying like, no, yeah. never go to weightlifting. Like Matt Fraser is a good example of technical weightlifting being a huge asset yeah. to the sport. You're a, a technical thinker, right? Like. Yeah watching how you do rope climbs how you think about where everything is on the floor like you're a technician yeah. but not a lot of people are yeah okay no i think i think you're right yeah okay yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so how about yeah. this Go I, I think i guess let me put it to you this way i i still think that i mean and, and this is the thing i don't believe that 
you know, you're guilty of that. But I think if, if someone was to listen to that, I think it might be a cop out. Oh, to not work on that's always the danger with like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's it's not a, it's not a catch all thing, but you know, I mean, to me, it's just, it's still shocking. You know, you go to like the games or a semi and I'm watching people do things and I'm like, that is just so grossly wrong still. And there's such an easy, like, you know, whether it's rope climbs or whether it's ring muscle or something and some things are harder to fix than others. Don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, there's certain things, and it's like if you have a long. I was saying to like Lauren, I'm like, you need to compete like it's your last ever competition, but you need to learn like you're going to compete for a hundred years. Mm, that's you, a good you way need to. to yeah. You need to be accumulating, and I almost got into the trap. It was like a year and a half ago, where I was kind of thinking like, oh, I don't know how many more years I'm going to be doing this, and I kind of like started to soften up a bit on my. And last year and a half, I've went like way deeper than I've ever gone into like learning mm. and it's done so well for me. Cause that's obviously yeah. the kind of person I am, but I think there's too many people that are always like, well, man, I got a competition next week. And if I change how I do burpees, then they'll slow down by then. Yeah. I'm like, well, are you training for the orange West yeah. garage <laughs> champion? Or are you trying to make the games in three years? You yeah. Know, yeah. Some, it, like, you know, I'm working with an 18 year old Yeah, and I'm like this, nothing you do in the next year matters. Yeah. As far as competition, but if you, you know, Olympic weightlifting, if you take three steps back to take four steps forward and it takes maybe a year for those technical improvements to, to then show themselves in a PR. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have to be, obviously that, that requires a long-term focus and that means, you know, even in the case, like for me, I've been working, like I can, I can give an example for myself. Uh, you know, like I'm trying to, been trying to revamp my ring muscle ups for, Three years. Really? Uh, yeah, just trying to get them better. And so most of the time when I do them in training, you know, the the sets are shorter and the rests are longer than I'm like proud of or that I would ever do in like a competitive situation. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, as soon as I do more than it breaks um, down and you it go breaks to a down technique and, and you I don't go want to a technique. Every, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I don't want my muscle ups to look like that. If I yeah. want to be a champion, I'm like my muscle ups can't look like that. And that could keep me out of going to the games or going, you know, if there's some workout with 60 ring muscle ups paired with something I don't like, you know, that technique is not going to cut it anymore. Yeah. You're too big. Yeah. And those suck. Yeah, and yeah. So I just refuse to do muscle ups, you know, nine out of 10 sessions that look like that. And yeah. so they're going to look like this, which means the intensity is going to be dropped in yeah. any workout that has muscle ups. Yeah. So I will caveat and say, even in those people that don't respond to hyper technical cues, you still always have to work on efficiency or yeah. your technique or cues that help non technical thinkers become more efficient. Yeah, like the. Uh, the golfer, you know, it's like there still has to be a way to, if if I and I guess this is my thing, if you're not constantly working to improve your technique, it's getting worse. That's fair. I, yeah. I like, you know, it's the same with a business. If you're not growing your business, it is shrinking. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that with technique, where I'm relentlessly pursuing technical improvement in everything because I have seen regression in some of my movements if I'm not like on it with yeah. myself. And so what that looks like is more like, you know, what's the, oh, I'm a visual learner or I'm a, an, you know, there's like different types yeah. of learners. And so, you know, audio. And so it obviously it depends on the athlete on how to try to improve those things and how hard do you push. Yeah. And, you know, and it depends on the mood and all those things. Yeah. And that's like, that's, but I think the, the constant pursuit of like, you know, improvement and let's call it technically or efficiency might yeah, be yeah. the word yeah, yeah i think is that uh, has to happen has to yeah, happen yeah, it's just sure. so i mean it's i mean especially in my training now that i'm like older i'm not going to just yeah. like all of a sudden get yeah, yeah. Way stronger. you're like at your peak potential because yeah. again it's more complicated like somebody can't climb a rope it's like all right do we work on the technique of the foot clamp or do we get your hands stronger and do get you strict pull-ups? weighted pull-ups <laughs> on a rope right like yeah there's always yeah, those there's those things but I, yeah. I do think like you know the in the sport, I mean, I, and then, and again, David and I were talking about this, my coach, and, you know, he grew up golfing. Yeah. I grew up swimming and volleyball. And when you're swimming, all you're doing is working on technique. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a, the efficiency of your ability in the water. It's like. It's all that really it, matters. Yeah. Like if you can't do it right. I, but I do kind of tell people that in CrossFit, if they're training, I'm like, you're, you know, if you're going into the gym and you've got a strength piece, accessories, two Metcons, I'm like. The work is going to get done. If the bar, if the weight on the bar is two thirty five or two forty five, 
or even 265, I'm like, I don't think it really matters. But if you're moving like crap, you're just putting balls into this bucket or into the, the good bucket technique or the bad technique. Let's just assume there's yeah, yeah. two buckets. And then, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Do y'all remember the game Mr. Bucket when we were growing up? No, I don't remember the song though. You do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Mr. Bucket. bucket. You put your bucket balls in my in mouth. Time. Mr. Bucket. Oh, shit. Yeah. That wasn't put today. your balls in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Because you would throw them in his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Jamie, cut um, that in. Buck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jamie, pull that up. Yeah. Fast, uh, Jamie. <laughs> um, and so I just think, and then when you compete, whatever one has more, that's what's going to result. Yeah, because you're going to default to you're like what default your training to what, is. And so, yeah. you know, if someone's got strength, accessories, two Metcons, you know, like when you're doing those two Metcons, more or less, like the work's getting put in, you're putting in the contractions or the reps or you know, your heart rate's getting up. It's like the blood's flowing, all that stuff. I'm like, I'd rather you go a little slower and move really well. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, find things to improve. Yeah. All right, so anyway. that's a very soft disagreement. What about things that we've said about changes in the sport that you agree with and can talk about publicly? Can you talk right. about them yeah, all yeah, publicly? No. Oh, yeah, no, I can talk about anything. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. What do you think is the most pressing thing? This sport, like let's say you look at the trajectory of it and you say, okay, we want to in 10 years be where the UFC is, where you right. have like multiple people that can be multimillionaires doing it, lots of people watching it. Like what's the... Whoa. Oh, Sorry, I found the Mr. Bucket. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, play yeah. it at the end. Yeah, we'll pull it in. Yeah, that'll be the, that'll yeah. be the outro song um, from henceforth. Uh, <laughs> from now on. Yeah, from now on. <laughs> Put your balls in one now. <laughs> Should I do it? <laughs> no, no, no. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, what is the most pressing thing? I think when you read – you've read the CrossFit Games rule book? Yeah. I mean, not super in detail, yeah. every single line, but yeah. yeah. Um, the interesting thing about the CrossFit Games rule book, as it stands right now, is that it could be a rule book for football. What do you mean? There's nothing in there that defines what we're doing. Oh, yeah, like it's, yeah, yeah. It's 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 basically if there's who, what, where, why, when. It's it's who's allowed to play, like how old you are, you know, what is your gender, who's on the team, yeah. Um, how do you qualify as a team? It's where it is. You know, and then it's when the competitions are, when does the open start, when is the deadline. Um, you know, there's a bit on like how to file an appeal. So it's almost like this framework that you could use for, for any sport. Kind of any sport, yeah. but it's not defining what it is yeah. at all. Yeah. Really. Um, the, cl the only thing in there that kind of starts to get into that sort of territory is the like the attire, like what you can and can't wear, which yeah. I wrote. Um, <laughs> <and> so <laughs> you wrote it for the rule book? Yeah, oh. Yeah. Um, you should get a little copyright. Like, yeah. Name, <laughs> yeah. Copyright. I, I gave copyright. it to them as a suggestion. Cause it was, it, I was trying to think of things that could be added to it. This was like a year and a half ago now. Um, and it was a frustration for me. Like most changes start, you know, with a problem and I'll tell a story real quick. So 20, <laughs> 20, 2020 online games, right. Yeah. Um, leading up to that, we started using knee wraps um, just the, the ones that you can use in Olympic weightlifting, there's different types. Yeah. Um, started using knee wraps because we're like, well, you're not great at squatting. If there's a squatting event, we should start using these. Yeah. And then we're going to use them. And my judge that came there said, no, you can't use that. Why not? Well, it's in the, it's in the rule book. I'm like, no, it's not. He said, well, yeah, it is. I'm like, I've seen people use these in like the open before um, or, you know, in competitions. And then, he's, and then he shows me this PDF and it says like no knee wraps, no belt. I'm like, well, I haven't seen this. He's like, well, all the other judges have this. But, like, I don't know what this is. And it's, it was just four pictures. It was, um, you know, something about grips, something about – it was belts. Belts yeah. have to be four inches. You can use neoprene knee sleeves but not wraps. Um, grips can't have a dowel, maybe one other thing. Okay. I'm like, all right, like, as long as you're, everyone else is doing this, yeah, we're in a group chat. Like, trust me, I double check. All right, I'll use knee sleeves. Um, so I use knee sleeves. Won the squat workout. <laughs> <laughs> did, nice. not win, did not win the squat workout. Uh, Hold on, what was the squat workout front that rep, year? One rep max front squat. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 2020 online games. Um, <laughs> did not win the yeah, squat. Yeah, yeah, did not. <laughs> did not. Um, fake plates. <laughs> and so, but I did see other people, not, not in that competition, but at the games, wear a belt that went up to five inches. So I'm like, so do, when I go to a competition, do I have to bring a four inch and a five inch belt yeah. and see what I can get away with? Yeah. See, that's my biggest problem is just, it's like, all right, enforce whatever the rules are. Like if you say these are the rules, then like your job is to enforce it. <laughs> oh, sorry. There's something really sharp there. Oh, okay. um, but, uh, 
Yeah. For everyone watching at home, we don't have the cameras down, but you're kneeling right yeah, now. Yeah, he's been kneeling. I know. For the, for I've been, I've an been, hour and 28 minutes. He's I've, been, I've been switching knees. <laughs> okay, good. Um, yeah, my hips were tight just from sitting and uh, air squats. So, so that was something that just annoyed me. So I wrote some rule suggestions for attire and apparel, just copy and went through a bunch of different other sports. And then some of the stuff they released in the past, they had, a, they had some rules on equipment one time at regionals 2018, they sent it on a PDF. So I used that sent it. It was like four pages or three pages of suggestions. And then they used, you know, two, two of them. And I, I put some in there knowing they weren't going to yeah. use yeah, them. Yeah. Um, but a bunch of them, I'm like, Oh, these are really good. And this is like exactly how they, describe knee sleeves and powerlifting and how they describe suits and in raw powerlifting or whatever right and kettlebell sport so yeah it's just you know and so my it's boring but uh you know if, if you so this is kind of coming full circle what do we need to improve um if you wanted to run a competition let's say uh that company came the to race you. track open yeah they <laughs> you know they came to you and said here's a million dollars i want you to run a, a sick event how would you run it? How would you make sure it was run to the best? Fucking the gold fire standard? fest of CrossFit right here. We're <laughs> taking that money and running, boy. So I think part of the issue is like you don't even, you would probably have to hire people that have um, run good competitions before. Yeah. And there's, there's just no gold standard. There's no like rule book on like what to do. Yeah. Uh, and so even in the context of whether that's Wadapalooza, whether that's Rogue and or CrossFit Inc. semis games, um, we're all debating, you know, talking in, around water coolers or on, on podcasts about what we think is better. Programming, is that good or bad? Was that safe? Was that unsafe? Um, it's a lot easier if you're a, you know, let's say you're a players association in the NFL and you are lobbying to change a rule, right? It's a lot yes. easier to, to debate about the existence of a rule and we want a subtle rule change on, you know, pass interference for the safety of the player yeah. or, or, you know, maybe the NFL wants to make a rule. Oh, this will be more exciting and here's why. So we're going to, you know, lighten this rule. Yeah. Um, and so, I th- oh, go ahead. Sorry. So I, I think, you know, there's just no, like what is safe when it comes to a rope climb? Yeah. It sounds like you think that the sport should be a little bit more known and knowable. Yeah. <laughs> you do think that. Yeah, oh, I do think okay. that. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. I thought you said earlier you disagreed with No, that. and there was there was Oh, just details. 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 Very yeah, yeah. like in terms of how it's implemented. Yeah, like very small de- I I think <laughs> I think there could be rules. No, I here's here's I guess I think what I disagreed with you on was uh I think I agreed about everything you were saying about known and knowable, but I know in reality no one who runs a competition wants exactly what you guys are saying. And yeah. I think there's a way to get to a middle ground. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Where yeah. the competitions are basically able to do more or less what they're doing right now. Um, which is some, what, what are they doing now? Whatever they want. Yeah. And uh, making it up like right before. Yeah. And I think there's a way to allow them to still have like a high degree of autonomy and um, creativity while giving them these guardrails that, protect them yeah and in in doing so also protect the athletes yeah but. so what do you think about like movement standards in quarterfinals like we went through a judges course yeah v ups are nowhere in it yeah then it comes out and you have Hold 20 on, you paid for a judges course is what yeah you to say. yes i paid to take a judges course the movement's not in there the video is not super clear in terms of what the standard is the videos showing no reps good reps is not super clear Tons of people that I saw doing it should have gotten major penalties or, and some people even that we coach were like, oh shit, afterwards. And you can't really repeat it because you you just, yeah, it's too many reps. And it's like, all right, well, we just like, now we're going to get a penalty for it. Like, would that issue not be a little bit more solved if it was just like, okay, well, we're going to tell you ahead of time what it is. We're going to show you videos of it. Is that an aspect of unknown and unknowable that you think would take away from creativity to do that? So I think- the solution to that, in my opinion, is first, the first step would be to come up with the generally accepted um, rules and movement standards for the common movements. Mm. Barbell thruster hasn't changed in 10 years, right? Okay. So release that and have a written and a it video. It never changes. You would have it as a, and again, in my opinion, yes. Yeah. However, you know, in order to, you know, maybe appeal to competition organizers. You would say this is the, um, I don't know, the, the yellow standard. It's, I don't know, it's called uh, the type one standard of the barbell thruster. 
Um, and you have that for the common movements. Let's say there's 100 yeah. or 50 or whatever it is. Um, you start with the really common ones that haven't changed in a very long time. Yeah. And then you have, if you want to add in a completely new movement, here are the criteria. Here's the criteria for setting a new movement standard. Ooh. The things you have to do. That's a good idea. Um, the checklist. And if you cannot check off all of these things, you cannot add the new movement. Mm. And then you would name it type two. So no, so that would be a new movement. Yeah. So like a V up for yeah. example, or um, like let me, so backwards roll to support, right? We haven't done them in a competition. Yeah. You know, it's not completely out of the question. They'll come up at a competition within the next 10 years. Yeah. So, you know, if you're thinking of that or you're thinking of, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's something you could do with some sort of strong manny, like an odd object yeah. type thing, right? Or like the sandbag to shoulder if they wanted to change that standard that they did. So, for so going back, brand new, like something we've never done before. Let's, let's just say backwards roll to supports. Like, okay, first you need, there would be like three windows. One, you release it um, a month in advance, a week in advance, or like a day in advance or on the day type thing. And you'd give suggestions on like the types of movements and why you would maybe consider releasing them further in advance, mm. um, which might be, you know, safety. Like if you were getting people to do a backflip at the games, maybe yeah. that's six months, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, whereas on the day, I think there are some things that are acceptable on the day and that would be, you know, like the, like an O course. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or let's say if there was an object that you had to move from here to there. Like a, like a sled or a or a bag or a like yeah. a thing that you either had to push, pull, or carry, and it was just like here's the line, here's the line. I think you could make that one of the standard movements. Well, whatever it's the just case, odd his object point is you're right? defining it. Yeah, and it's yeah, in yeah. Stone. So, so and you know, month, a week, a day, whatever. Oh, that's so cool. Um, why yeah. didn't we ever think of that? <laughs> and then that's why he's here. And then you have professor. And then <laughs> again, at any of those points, you need to have a a video showing. Good reps, bad reps at speed, yeah. at competition full speed. speed. Full from speed from high level athletes. From high level athletes yeah. at full speed, showing good reps and bad reps and why. And that video would be, you know, relatively long. Yeah. You know, anywhere from a minute to five minutes, depending on the movement. Um, you know, obviously written movement standards. And and I think if it was released a month or a week in advance, um, I think the 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 caveat that you can change it if if you have good data. Because again, you know, maybe they yeah. release the V up a month in advance. And then a week later, you know, they've been getting feedback from people they trust and they go, oh man, we messed this up. Yeah. Okay, we're going to we're gonna say you can bring your knees up first because it's just the only yeah. way. But yeah. it would probably also be written in there saying, hey, we have by this time yeah. to change yeah, sure. it yeah. based on yeah. feedback. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so and you know if you haven't heard by this date that it's the way it is now. So for, exa like, for example, the freestanding handstand push-up that we did the 2021 games, um, I don't think it was a good standard. I think it could have been a lot better. And that would be a movement I think you'd want a week in advance. Yeah. Um, and so, like, my idea for that would be just like we did the handstand ramp where you just say, okay, you start with your hands behind this line, hands behind that line, and in the middle there is a different color and your head must make contact with that. Mm. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Like I, what, what, you know. Yeah, it's just very clear. It's just you like see it. obviously yeah. within that, and, and obviously that section could be 20 feet or it could be, three feet yeah but it's like you know you're gonna have to start on your hands you're gonna have to walk forward you have to get your head to the ground and get it back up and go forward whereas the one we had had a you must show control yeah before and the lowering. control was not uniformly it and so then and now within these movement standards this list of like what do i do if i want to add in a new movement you give a bunch of like suggestions and examples of past things and that that's where it comes down to you need the right people making these things yeah. but if you give enough you give enough examples of things in the past that have went wrong or theoretically like, hey, um, you know, clear start and end. And for odd objects, an easy thing to say. Um, so, you know, the, the hammer. Yeah. Right. People were, you know, hooking and pulling and it wasn't their fault. Um, with that, if you if you tinkle test nuts. <laughs> yeah. Dingle, what do you say? Dingle dick or something like that. <laughs> well, I think I also insult. I heard that podcast. I don't know. Frazier might have said something, but I said something like it wasn't about the money. It was about the glory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and it was you know I didn't know until it was over. Now the frustrating thing about that was I know an athlete that went to one of the CrossFit staff and said before the event, "What are you going to do when people hook and pull?" Yeah, and they said, "Don't hook and pull." Yeah, you but go, they, no, no, I'm not going to. When someone else does, what are you going to do about it? Don't worry about it. Yeah, and then they did. Yeah. So, if we're looking at hooking and pulling as as an example. What games are this if people want to go back? 2017. And, yeah. Yeah. 
um, the assault banger. Yeah. And there could have been an easy solution to this. I want to hear what your solution is. My solution to this, there's like criteria on how to, you know, there's, there's two solutions to it. Three, one, do whatever the hell you want. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hook and pull. As long as the only thing that can contact is the hammer. And your two feet are on this. Yeah. uh, You know, you can't push it with your hands. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Two would be to create something where it would essentially be physical and physically impossible. So if you had a, give me, um, we're going to have to narrate me, this. If somebody's the, listening, uh, the <laughs> remote. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. So, so he's got tape, my phone and a remote. Let's anyway, see where he's going. So the only way it happens is if you're standing here okay. and then you're, and holding on to the edge towards you. Yeah. When you're standing at or in front of it, you can't. You can't. So on this, you build horns that come up. So you have to stand so in front of it. You have to stand in front of it. Yeah. Problem. And then if you stand behind it, the horns are going to hit you in the shin. You just can't stand yeah. behind it. The other thing would be your judge, if they think you're hooking and pulling it, will say, go do three burpees. Yeah. So, and, and that works too in a, um, or you could have enforced a penalty that says, we're going to watch the videos after if you're hooking and pulling, you're going to get 10 seconds added to your time every every time you do it. And here's what it means to hook and pull. The hammer stays on it for more than five frames in a row. Right. Right. Like, so that way the video review is clear. I think there's ways to avoid that as much as possible. So there'd be three, basically for, for odd objects, there's, there's three things you can do. The first is allow them to do whatever the hell they want. So if it's a sled, you can pick up the sled. I don't care. Yeah. You can walk backwards. You, I've seen competitions where they say backwards sled drag. I'm like, wrong. Yeah. How are you, what's backwards? What's yeah. sideways? Run yeah. backwards. Like, that's not going to work. Yeah. So you let them do anything they want. Number two is you make it impossible for them to do the thing you don't want to do. Yeah. So we look at the sled push. And you know how people have, like, picked lifted it up, it up. lifted yeah. it up, or tilted it or whatever. Yeah. So you you design a sled that can't be picked up, whether there's, like, hooks in the front. So as soon as you pick it up, they dig into the yeah, sand. Yeah, they stop you the, from the, moving. The grass. Yeah. Or this is the – and so these are these are the three the, – the first one is the most ideal one. Do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. The second is uh, there's a possibility that – Build it in a way thing. that avoids the – Build the thing that it avoids the ability to do that. The third is create a very clear penalty that the judge can give if they see the athlete doing it. Um, and because the problem is like I've been to, you know, like a local competition and they'll do like backward sled drag and yeah. the athlete kind of starts going to the side and the judge's like, hey, stop that. Yeah. Yeah. Or and a then, warning. And then they just kind of yeah. keep going and then it's too late. Yeah. So they need to say if the judge says you're doing this thing wrong then you must drop your thing and go and do two calories on the rower or go yeah. back to, or do a, do a penalty burpee like they do in like obstacle course racing. Yeah. It has to be a very, cause with a lot of those, especially with odd objects, you're moving it. It's like the judge isn't going to push it back Yeah, with a lunge. Yeah. It's easy. Cause you're yeah. like, you need to touch the ground and go back to that line. Yeah. But a 250 pound bag, they can't. <laughs> yeah. Or the snail if they're, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Right. And so, those are for odd objects. I'm if, against number three because I feel like we have non-professional judges. And if somebody makes a wrong judgment call, you screw over an athlete. I'd rather have something be like, all right, they video review everything afterwards. Same judges. Sure. And there's penalties that Again, are clearly I, enforced. I think that third can be avoided in almost any odd object thing that you yeah. create. You could just build the standard right. Yeah. Or th- build the implement right. Yeah, you right. can. One and two should can be done. Like I, I can't think of many I've tried where you can basically make it either do whatever the hell you want or create the object in a physical way that it's basically impossible yeah. or it's just so obvious that you're doing the thing we don't want you to do because of the way we built it that then you just, you the know, penalty is easy a, to the enforce. Penalty's yeah. easy to enforce as yeah. opposed to this gray, like, well, you know, the sandbag's kind of on my shoulder when I'm walking, but it's supposed to be on my head or, yeah. or whatever. Like yeah, what yeah. is your head and what's your shoulder? Um, so I think there's ways to, so again, you have new, every like common movement has a type a standard or a yellow standard or whatever. And then if you want to change that, let's say a sandbag clean, right? Like there's kind of different ways to do a sandbag yeah. clean or, or a rope climb, right? There's, 
you know, oh, do you have to show control, descent below a line? Do you have to touch and then re-pinch with your hands? Do you have to touch, re-grab, and then pinch yeah. before you do a legless descent? Like, there's all these different... Um, so you have, like, the type A and maybe even a type B standard and describe why you might use one over the other for, let's say, it's the legless. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Like, just think about the idea. handstand push-ups, yeah. all the different standards. You've, you just named them the different ones over the years. You'd be like, well, that's the type A and this yeah. Yeah. workout we're doing. And, you, and then you have specific reasons why. Yeah, so yeah. as a competi- as a competition organizer, this is like, oh, these are great resources. Thank you so much. You have a type A, B, C, D handstand standard. And th- these are the situations that you use them for and why and where they work best. And then if you want to add another one, again, there's like a checklist and a list of criteria. And hopefully you can understand like, hey, the value in, we really want you to try to use the ones we've already made. Yeah. We really do. Yeah. Because it's better for judges. It's better for athletes. It's better for fans. It's better for the announcers. Um, just making a new standard for the sake of making a new standard, if it doesn't add anything like functionally better than what these other ones have to offer, yeah. you're like not allowed to do it. Yeah. And this is what is defined as functionally better or, yeah. And have so, you presented this to them? Yeah, why isn't this happening? You're part of the, I'd like to kind of know the PFAA thing yeah, and yeah. Like what it means, but like why aren't, I feel like. What do you think is preventing them? Yeah. There's been what, two years of a new administration now? And like some of the things that haven't changed that are like, why isn't this a change happening? Why is this still going on? What's, is it just like so hard of a thing to change from a bureaucratic standpoint or do they just disagree? It's like they would listen to this and be like, no, these guys are idiots. It'll ruin the sport. Or they're busy doing other things that aren't sport related. Third option. No, but there's a sport team. So yeah. somebody's job. No, oh, you're kidding. not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to fiddle with it. Um, <laughs> Tape down. <laughs> um, so if you're talking specifically about these movements, like yeah, this or, movement standard thing, yeah. um, I don't want to speak for them. I I have presented basically this to yeah. them, the idea. In they the, loved it like we did? <laughs> uh, at, like at this time. I can't time, see why you would turn any of that down. That was so great. Say it again. I want to hear it one more time. <laughs> yeah. You can rewind to yeah, uh, yeah. 56 minutes and 30 seconds of the no, podcast. Man, we're at 145. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Is it really, you think it's just that simply? But it's necessary work, no? I, I guess I, not. Again, I, mean, I, I, don't, I, don't want, I can't speak to exactly, right. you know, it, I think it, I think it uh, you know, if you've listened to, again, I'm kind of piecing a bit. I have presented it. Um, it's not something they're doing right now. They're not in the process of doing it. Presented it to them. Would you do it for them? If they Work, I'm you? working dude, on it. Dude, I've seen. I'm working on it for free. This dude yeah. has a freaking, like, yeah, that this dude, sick. as in this 10,000 page manual of CrossFit events, how the games is programmed, what the styles of workouts are, how to create standardizations. I think I read through it he was like i'd like to get your thoughts and i'm like i have like there's got to be at least one guy we could fire and give you his salary <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll clean this sport yeah. up overnight time um, to retire brent this yeah. is your new job yeah gosh i don't know um <laughs> i just i just enjoy doing it i just think it's fun um but uh do you want to build a competition and make it the gold standard no no not really like i'd, I'd more like to build the tools mm. And, and let, let them use it, and then or like sharpen them, it? and then allow people to fall on. Them. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you do. Uh, yeah, yeah. no, uh, no, I, I like, I like, I like creating frameworks, and you know, like, like even, you know, I like the idea of, and I tried to do this with the professor project a bit. Like, how can I distill down like my knowledge on rope climbs right into just like as short of a package yeah. as possible? Like to me, that's that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure if I'm adequately suited to like manage a team of people mm. um, no 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 no. so they'll hire some other jabroni for that you're just gonna come up with these ideas and yeah i mean sorry so w- what question am i being asked I, think <laughs> yeah, I don't know it's got a lot of questions <laughs> yeah i know um yeah. so i said originally do you want to do a competition and the answer is n- no. not right now yeah no. right not right yeah. now I, it's not it's not something that doesn't interest me yeah. but um I, again i would like to create I would, I'd be more interested in creating framework that like multiple competitions. Yeah. Could use. I mean, I think it's a big problem to try to grow something if you can't explain it. Yeah. Like you're a professional CrossFit athlete. You go into the airport, you meet somebody who's <laughs> never done CrossFit, explain your sport. Yeah. What and do you do? Well, everyone does something different, which is fine, I yeah. think. Uh, but, you know, it's like if someone had a half an hour, it'd be nice to give them something to read. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. You know, because, yeah. because you, you know, you can describe CrossFit like what I do, you know, in a couple sentences or whatever. Yeah. But if someone's like, 
great. Like run it for me. It'd be like, well, how, you know, what, what am I doing? That's, yeah. Is it the same? Is there as anyone else out there uh, that thinks about it the way you do that you kind of bounce ideas off of? Yeah. I th- honestly, what I find is whenever I have a conversation with any athlete or coach or manager <clears throat> agent, that's been in it for five years or more, you have a conversation with them and they more or less agree on everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, that's again, why I don't get, cause it's like, it's, it's the opinion of almost everybody I talk to. I'm not close to a lot of HQ people. I have some clients that are involved in HQ. I've never really been part of like the inner circle there. So it just seems weird to me that it's like, I, this seems like consensus opinion from all the people that you'd consider the best athletes, the most visible, the best coaches, the training organizations, the training camps, yep. the event organizers. It's literally That's the what I found. whole community. So it just confuses me. Like why, where's the implementation? How do we get it changed? That's what I'm working on. Yeah. It's is slow. that what the PFAA yeah. is doing? It's slow, yeah. right? It's slow. I think um, a lot of it is, uh, you know, from my experience, like I'm, you know, I'm volunteering my time and people are busy, yeah. right? And so the, there's this tough, there's a tough balance between the people that have the knowledge and expertise. Like there's, you know, like for example, if I said this thing, a lot of these things to an athlete, they'd be like, that would sound great. Not all of them are equipped to like implement those things. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm not expecting them to, I, I feel like I am, but I'm also busy, you know, I'm volunteering my time to do it when I have the time, but some weeks it's like 10 hours, other weeks it's zero. Yeah. Right. Um, it just depends on the week. Uh, and so getting people that, the balance between like having the expertise and can put in the time is yeah. like really tough. Cause yeah. like you have, you don't have the time. Yeah. Right. Like I could maybe, you know, my hope is to get some of these things to a place where I can get on a call with you for 30 minutes and be like, do you agree with these things? Like, give me some high. Okay, cool. And then we'll yeah. like bring it back to a group and then like hash away at it. If there's something like we feel we missed based yeah. on like an expert's opinion, but we can't, I can't, we can't expect, you know, everyone that has that knowledge to just like dump to drop it, to f- fix to, it, to yeah. drop everything they're doing and, and fix it. So I don't want to like, I'm, I'm always cautious with the PFA stuff, like speaking publicly. I don't want to make any promises I can't yeah, keep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, cause it's, so the PFA is the Pro- professional fitness athletes association trying to create what is it's it? basically you, like a players association. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's you. Who else? Uh, yeah. Um, so Pat, Pat's really helpful. Um, right now the board of directors is me, Pat, uh, the two Jukish brothers, Lazar, Luca, Fee, Saghafi, uh, Victoria Campos in, uh, South Africa, South America. Sorry. Uh, two females from South Africa, uh, Laverne and Dina Swift and, uh, Roy Stunn. Okay. Nine of us. Yeah. And you know, with varying levels of ability to commit time, like yeah. know, we have a group thread and we're working on stuff. We're trying to hopefully, um, this, between the semis and the games, you'll hear more from us. We have some things in the works. I just, until I'm like really confident that yeah, we you don't want to, deli- yeah, I just yeah. don't want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, we are trying to, you know, trying to give, essentially it's like free resources. And are have. you tied to CrossFit? Are you acknowledged by CrossFit? Yeah. So we, you have, have, we calls have calls with them. With them. Okay. We have calls with them yeah. about every, uh, it's on average every two months. It used to be every one month. Okay. And so, you know, uh, today is the, it's a Sunday. We had a call with them on, I think it was Monday. And we like went through, you know, I sent a survey to a bunch of elite athletes, um, got like 25 really good responses on pros and cons, of the opening quarters that they thought, you know, we summarized that into like a document for them, sent that to them and then followed up on a lot of those things on a call, asked like some very specific questions. They asked us some questions about like timing, um, you know, what we thought about this, what we thought about that, like a, a little bit more logistic stuff. They yeah. were more curious. That's what they were talking about. And then we're kind of getting into like nitty gritty of you know, frustrations around the V-ups or yeah. um, giving them feedback. And that's the relationship we have with them, which is a massive improvement. Yeah, yeah. From it, what yeah. that kind of that thing That gives me a little like hope. 2018 or 19. Obviously, the input, you know, as a as a union or an association, we're an association because we're not employed. If you're yeah. employed, you're a union. Um, you know, it's, it's the power we have is completely Animal. relative to the power of, how much the athletes as a whole are willing to um, like stand behind it yeah. type thing. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, I'm not ever expecting or wanting or planning for like a lockout. Right. Yeah. It's not about that. And it, it just, it wouldn't work. You don't you think know. it would? Well, by work, I mean, you'd need to get athletes to want to do it. Yeah. And you'd I'm, need to get every big camp and all the biggest athletes on board with the same changes. I think that people would want. Yeah. And so we're trying to start with, 
things that would be like universally agreed to by like, you know, 99% of athletes that are, aren't like controversial, just yeah. fairness and safety are yeah. the two kind of big pillars. And we're trying to come up with, uh, like in the summer, the hope here is to kind of put out, it's like kind of boring, but, um, like <laughs> athlete resources, and competition resources, that will be free on the website. So things like, Hey, you're an athlete. Um, and it, stuff that a lot of people already know, but it'd be, you know, attire stuff, equipment stuff for online competition, um, maybe some stuff about taxes, just like some general or even like insurance, like yeah. health insurance for traveling and competing. And then for competitions, it's like sort of starting to come up with these resources of recommended best practices from, you know, the best athletes in the Hydration, world. Hydration, that, no, is that what you so mean? No, sorry, competition resources like health and safety, like safety oh, and fairness. Oh, 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 yeah, for, yeah. Um, for the competition itself. For the competition, itself. like so yeah. like a ring muscle up, pull up bar and rope climb, like this is how to set up your rig safely. Mm. Um, and then kind of starting to like, I'm working on these. It's just like, it's taking, you know, it takes time to kind of carve out the time and then obviously do it more on, um, you know, uh, considerations for how to run a competition that is like fair from heat to heat and lane to lane. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that comes back to movement standards, but it's even just making sure you're covering the same amount of distance. Like that one yeah. year, Lucas Parker back to him, uh, at the soccer stadium, his lane was uh I don't know what you're saying. Shadow? Oh, okay. the word yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's uh, just hotter yeah. and colder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The I mean, there's been joking of, around a here. Lot of those. I just like couldn't the, figure out the word. But yeah, he, no, that, the, yeah. yeah. He, was he was in the shade. That's yeah. the word. Jesus. Yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Run shoulder to overhead this year was not the same distance. There were five There's, events this year. Five of them? That were different distances. And so if you look from the first year in Madison, 2017, to 2021, that's 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, five years, there was one workout in five years that athletes didn't cover the same distance, and that was Atalanta. Hmm. Because when they ran in, they kind of fanned out to their lanes, and they fanned back, so the person in the last lane had a little bit further to travel. Hmm. Now, that isn't counting workouts with a mass start. Yeah. So like yeah. a bike, a mass a swim, start, a run. I feel like it's on the yeah. athletes yeah. to, a, a, yeah. A bike, a swim, a run. Yeah. You're talking about lane assignments. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, like in a mass start, the bikes, the swims, the runs, like, you know, th that's also common in triathlons. It's like there's just too many people and the event's long enough that it's yeah. like deal with it. Yeah. Um, so I didn't count those. But this year at the games, there were five, which isn't good. Yeah, it's just a big issue. Yeah. It's like you're in a racing sport. How do you and think they would explain that? Like, what would their defense be? Um, it sorts for the fittest. I think it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, maybe, maybe it's just growing pains. Maybe it's just, I, I think again, it comes back to, and I, you know, I don't want to point fingers. I think it's, uh, you know, it's a document explaining like, make sure your lanes are the same. Yeah. And, and, and it's, that it's adhered to like in order for the competition, I imagine to that be, they noticed, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, I think there's just a lot going on. You, you set up the you set up the floor and you're not planning for it, and then all of a sudden you, for example, one of the examples of an event that wasn't the same distance was the back nine. The deadlift bars were staggered. Mm, yeah, and like that's super minimal, right? Yeah, but the workout's only two minutes long. Yeah, it still makes a difference. So yeah. you know, it's like it was deadlifts and what heavy squat cleans yoke. So you yeah. yoke, you clean, you walk forward, you deadlift, and then you walk back. And so the person with the deadlift bar four feet further had eight feet further to walk, four feet there, four feet back. Super minimal. I mean, if every second counts, every yeah, it's just step like the documentary. <laughs> uh, so you know, and the the solution to that is something that has been done in the past, where you finish the deadlift, you walk forward, you touch yeah. the pylon, you walk back. Yeah. So you're still covering the same distance. Um, yeah. So again, I think it's just, and it's it would be an agonizing amount of things because there's so many so much variety. But it's like saying, hey, all the lanes have to be the same distance, and here are you know examples of where this didn't go well and here would be the solution to making those things work um and usually it is like an out and back within yeah. your own lane is typically the solution um but something like the start of the uh the capital is a little more challenging because everyone's starting with the pig flip and then you all kind of funnel into the middle yeah and so you know you'd have to find some way to stagger your starting position so that that funnel and again is that's equal yeah you could, but that one again it's like you could probably create a rule that says if your event is you know x long in terms of total time and includes an uh a run in it that's a long period of time then this initial lane not being equal doesn't matter because then it's yeah. kind of like triathlon where yeah. it's like, Hey, yeah. it's going to sort itself out. But if it's a, like that shuttle run shoulder to overhead, I think that was one of the most penalizing things for the people that had yeah. to go longer. It's I, like, yeah, I felt that was, um, very poor. Yeah. In my opinion. yeah. I think, the, um, yeah, that's one of, yeah, I don't, I think there were a lot. And 
And it seemed like an easy solution. Yeah. It's like if you all right, well, you're going to stagger the shouldered overhead thing. Just stagger where their run starts. Yeah, there's are. there's a Make lot of different same. ways you can just do a little out and back. Yeah, and there's ways you can cover the same distance. But yeah, so I think yeah, so that's kind of what you know we're working on at the PFA, and it's it's, it's a lot. It's kind of like I I wish we had done more. I want to do more. Um, we've done more than anyone else. So yeah. that's something. Yeah, yeah. you're working <laughs> um, on it. Yeah, I, I am. Gonna, I, am, I yeah. am working on it. I'm like I mean those. The, the yeah. shit I read through that you did was like, it's just top notch shit. Like just the amount of yeah. time that you went to do that. Can you put with, that on the back? Can you print this as a book and then on the back, it's top notch shit. <laughs> El Hodge. Yeah, that's my quote. No, I actually, yeah. um, but for I, real, I'm thinking really of getting good. a tattoo while I'm here, and I top might just get shit. that right here. Yeah, yeah. you should get <laughs> a P- top notch PFFA. Play, yeah. Is that right? Uh, PFA. Yeah. You know what's funny is the PFFA does roll off the tongue a lot better. People say that all the time. The double F, but it's a double A. Yeah. Mm. P F double A. Yeah. Yeah. You might just need a whole brand change there. Yeah. Like, like yeah, just no, that's like not a priority. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and hold on. Does, does CrossFit have their own? Cause I feel so like they, they no, started, they have a divisional athlete committee and they have, um, uh, I think they have like four groups of five and each of those is sort of like, you know, there's some masters, some teens, uh, um, adapted. I would love to be at the teen one, by and the then, way. You know, <laughs> Like, like elite kind of athletes. And, I, and I've spoken with uh, Scott Panchik, who has been and is on one of those. And they have similar to calls that we have where, you know, I think the difference is I don't think they are bringing as much to the table, like, proactively as much as CrossFit asks them questions and they, you know, let them know what their thoughts are, or like, you know, season structure, um, you know, whatever kind of CrossFit brings yeah. to the table. Um, I think they're still really productive conversations and you know they're like and again like i can't speak to what the teams need really or the yeah. adaptives need i just yeah, I, yeah. I can't i can't pretend to know what the masters need yeah um but yeah no i there's not you know they let us know that they were building them and it wasn't like they were trying to push us out or something and, and again you know what the pfa is or could be it's, it's all relative to what the athletes give it and that comes down to you know more work from us and me to like gain better awareness for it yeah which is something you know we've y'all need any more people or any positions or anything like that i mean yeah it's something i don't don't worry about it right now Uh, we can talk about it off camera stuff too but there's some things we're trying to do within the next few months that should kind of gain some more awareness get people to understand what we're up to um i mean trying to have some in-person meetings at the semis just like a kind of a touch point, like, hey, we exist. And like, y'all need cookies. That stuff works <laughs> wonders for Girl Scouts. You yeah. ever see? No. The big orange. Just cookies. make them chocolate chip or something yeah. good. So we're trying to have, like, I'm, I'm planning on definitely having one at the West and seeing if some of the other athletes are able to have one at, at their semis, just like a, t- just a touch point, right? Yeah. Just a, hey, this is what we've been doing. This is what we have planned. And then hopefully have one at, um, at the CrossFit Games as well. Yeah. Um, just to kind of like get everyone in a room, have conversations like these, obviously, like, you know, without the mics kind of thing. But um, just to kind of like, and then, you know, we're coming up trying to refine, continually refine. There's just so many potential things like, hey, what can we really rally behind that's simple and um, can get implemented? implemented. Yeah. And I think a lot of our focus is going to be on, um, you know, like I had a really, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm, I don't need to say Should that. I create a, co- I feel like coaches are very underrepresented and also judges or like event organizers. Should I create a, like a, like no, you don't need anything else to do. So, <laughs> no, like what I what I want to like, part of what I want to do is like just again improve communication. Um, really, the three big ones is the athlete free athlete resources on like you know just like taxes, what you need to bring to a competition, and um, what, what even like drug testing. Like here's what you should expect from a drug drug test. Like here's your rights and responsibilities when you go to a test, and you know obviously just links to what not to take. Yeah. Um, competition resources, so things for competitions to run safe and fair, primarily. Yeah. Right. Even you know one that we're gonna do is just uh, here is a survey that you can send to your athletes, so they don't have to come up with the questions. Mm. Like once your competition's over, like get you your know, feedback, get your feedback, yeah. and <laughs> hopefully develop a relationship with those competitions. Where hey, can we have that too? Yeah. And then we can learn from that to improve. Does our the own. games do that? They send a really good survey. Yes, yeah, so we're trying to get theirs. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, they send a really thorough one. And so, you know, if you have some small competition, you can be like, eh, I just want these three questions. Or I want, like, all one. Yeah, yeah. Go, go all out. Um, and then the third one is just improving communication. So just trying to email athletes even more and then start to get a list of, you know, we're starting to get a list of coaches. And we, we communicate with the big agents as well. But cool. I'm trying to communicate more with the coaches just to get everyone, like, talking more. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think... And that's the tough thing with this sport is, you know, I'm like, I consider Pat like a really good friend and, you know, we're working together on this. We only see each other in person twice a year, mm. <laughs> maybe three yeah, times, yeah. right? I guess this year will be three, right? Um, so 
and even less for a lot of other people. So you get in the room and there's that face to face and I've tried to have like, you know, zoom calls and emails. It's just not the same. Yeah, it's you not. can't get that same, you know, you preach brother preach. <laughs> yeah. You need to see someone like, you know, me explaining something and it, I think it's super valuable if I'm explaining something I'm really passionate about and to me makes a lot of sense. And then maybe there's another elite athlete and you look over and they're like nodding their head. And then there's like a youth athlete there and like, Oh yeah, well that sounds smart. And, but if they're on the call and everyone's just quiet, they're like, "Eh, maybe this guy's crazy. It's easier too, I think to just be distracted if you're on a zoom call and somebody else is like, you know, half listening with their thing muted and behind them is they're watching TV behind 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 their camera. Whereas, you know, you're in there and there's, you know, me, a, an elite athlete or whatever. And then there's another one who's also like older respected and they're nodding their head and you're like, Oh yeah. Okay. This is, I do want this, you know? And, um, and those steps sound like they make sense to, to get there. And yeah, I'll buy in, I'll give you my email and, you know, take a cookie and yeah, yeah, there it is. so that's, yeah, we're trying to get that in person. PF double A cookies yeah. coming this games. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, I didn't plan on this podcast being about that, but that's yeah. the, yeah, that's what we're working on. It's slow. Slower than I'd like, but All it's right, still nice. fun. So Any before fun? I do my bucket yeah. of fun, balls in my mouth, bucket of fun <laughs> song, we need. Do you have anything that you want to say? Shout outs? Oh, uh, anything? I don't think so. Yeah, I just people uh, can find you at yeah Instagram Fikowski, Fikowski Instagram, and uh, thanks for listening and thanks. Thanks for having me this week. It's been. I mean, we've only been here a couple of days now. Yeah, but it's already been. Already thanks been for fun. coming, my yeah. man. Let's listen. Yeah, let's see this. <gasps> oh yes, I do know this. Mr. Bucket, the first to get their balls into Mr. Bucket wins, but look out, because the balls will pop out of his mouth. Oh, Mr. Bucket, <laughs> the balls will fall into my mouth.